Saturday. BET presents Black College Football. Today from Veterans Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, it's the Capital City Classic featuring the Jackson State Tigers and the Braves of Alcorn State. The forecast for today, as you can see, rainy and cold, but as my broadcast partner, Nate Newton, would tell you, perfect day for football as two SWAC teams look to close out the 1999-2000 season. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm George Johnson. Well, been a couple of weeks since we last talked to you, but things have started to develop in the SWAC. Grambling State is already on their way to the SWAC championship game. As for in the standings in the Eastern Division, Alabama State is 6-4, and four, as is Alabama A&M. Jackson State also checks in overall at 6-4, and four, but they are 3-3 three and three in the conference. No chance of appearing in that SWAC championship game. Grambling State, though, as I said, has already clinched. They're awaiting the victory if Alabama A&M can get the win today or Alabama State in the SWAC championship game. Joining me up in the booth for this one is Nate Newton, the former All-Pro offensive guard of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's start off with Alcorn State, a club that is very inexperienced looking for their first win today. Really at the offensive line is where they struggle, and because of that, the quarterback position is affected, especially with that two-headed monster of Damian Ford and Sir Haver Fair. Starting with Damian Ford, he's your classical drop-back quarterback, Serious pass can get the ball deep, but they change their offenses sometimes, and that's when they go with Fair. Fair is a nice running quarterback. He gets out of the pocket, and he makes things happen. But on the other side, there's a, got a nice defensive player in Howard Clark. Number 44 it has 103 tackles. He's a super player, and he's a ball-hawking guy. Also joining us in the booth is the, booth is the former uh, All-American with Howard University, Player of the Year in 1994, a quarterback, and that is Jay Walker. Jay, when we talk about Jackson State, this is a very experienced team. They've got some key players that are seniors and juniors. As you take a look at our graphic, the voice of experience, 21 seniors to Alcorn State's seven seniors. And yet, when you look at their offense, they've been most impressive where they're most inexperienced, and that is at the quarterback spot with Robert Kent. Yeah, talking about Robert Kent, he is a freshman, but he's not playing like a freshman at all. He's six foot five, 205 pounds, best athlete on the football team. More importantly, he's thrown for over 2,200 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Those are fantastic numbers for a freshman. And how about this to boat? Coming out of high school, he was a 4.0 GPA. On the defensive side of the football, the Jackson State defense is triggered by Ed Reese. He's a six foot, 240 pound linebacker, great run stopper, plays very solidly in between the tackles, great run stopper. I think we're going to have a good challenge seeing if he can stop the Alcorn defense, Alcorn offense today on defense. Braves looking to get a victory today. They're the only winless team in the SWAC. The last time the Braves failed to win a game was back in 1958. They don't want to do that again. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. By TiVo, TV your way. And by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Welcome back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, where, as we told you at the top, it is extremely wet, it is extremely cold, and Nate, one would assume that young men playing in Mississippi most of their lives aren't used to weather like this to play football in. Oh, no, but baby, it's time to ball, it's the, it's the fat man's weather, it's time to get out here and have some fun, run the ball. Leave the passing alone, Jay. Leave the <laughs> Never. passing alone. Never. Jackson State won the kick, decided to defer, so Alcorn State will receive the football. And on the return, and finding some room right there for Alcorn State was Renard Reynolds. Reynolds gets it out to about the 30-yard line, and it'll be first and 10. Alcorn State. Coming into this football game, as we said, still looking for their first win of the season. They have that two-headed monster at quarterback spot. And already you can see as the mud starts to settle in. But Sir Haver Fair will start things off at quarterback for this club. <laughs> and he is more the running quarterback. The so they're listening to you already, Nate. 
Time to run the ball. That's the only chance we got today. They got, excuse me. Fair is going to hold on to the football, looking to get to the outside. Has all kinds of pressure and finally dragged down. Great defensive play by number 44, Elgin Andrews, the sophomore linebacker. Take a look now at our starting lineups. Brought to you by Western Union. Quentin Raston is your fullback. Yancey Wright, who's played quarterback. Wide receiver is the tailback. Reynolds and Gilmore, good receivers. An offensive line with four freshmen and one sophomore. Not a good sign. <laughs> Anytime you got to start that many freshmen right away, it means you have no seasoned veteran. Who are they learning from? Who are they getting game field experience from? Have to learn on the run, baby. Learn on, <laughs> learn the, on the run. run. <laughs> a loss of 10 on that play. And this time, Fair going to try the quarterback draw. Pick up about five yards on the play. Finally brought down by Vince Davis. Gets the ball out to about the 25-yard line. That'll make it second down and 15. Looking at the defense, Al Stokes, Hammock, Young, and Greer are your defensive linemen. Edward Reese, a three-time all-swack performer, is your middle linebacker. Secondary with Bryant, Denson, Caraway, and Forbes. Michael Caraway has earned the starting spot away from a pretty good defensive player and Vince Davis, but you will still see Vince, number six, a whole lot in this football game. Fair on third down and 15. Great defensive play right there for Jackson State. Coming up to make the play was Keith Williams. So that makes it fourth down. You know, it's pretty much an uphill climb from there. They came out, tried to do a bootleg on first down, put themselves in a hole by forcing something they don't want to have all day, which will be second and long, third and a ton. And they're not a great passing team right now, especially with that offensive line. Second play, they're trying to get up the middle with a quarterback sneak. As you know, that's not going to work. Because <laughs> it's a long game situation. The quarterback sneaks at all corner working for a real long time. <laughs> Ed Shakuria is your punter. Back deep is Tory Thigpen. Not a good punt at all, but it takes a Braves bounce and may have hit the back of a Alcorn State Brave football player's foot. And it is down at about the 42-yard line. A 33-yard punt. First and 10 for Jackson State when we get back. Jackson, Mississippi is where we are. Scoreless as we've just started. George Johnson along with Nate Newton, Jay Walker, and Joe Claire is wandering somewhere out there. But I've already told you how wet it is, so you know Joe's looking for a little shelter. Robert Kent, though, he's got a play in the rain, and he's done a pretty good job. Last five games, he's thrown for over 300 yards in each. First and 10 at the 42. Here comes the blitz. Oh! Almost off. Big guy could have been a hero. <laughs> he could have been a hero. There was nothing but daylight in front of him. I don't know if he would have ran the whole 30 yards in time. He's a big D lineman. <laughs> Take a look at our starting lineups. Damian Ducksworth is your fullback. Tim Manning, Tory Digpen, Lawrence Story, and Daniel Guy. Four receivers, and they say they will throw despite the fact that it is wet out here. And there's your offensive line. Gary Aikens and Chris Hammond, who they thought they would redshirt earlier this year, but he's back now and ready to play. So here we go, second down and 10 for Robert Kent. The redshirt freshman, who seems to be able to do a little bit of everything, completes his first pass to Daniel Guy. Guy gets it inside Braves territory, down by the 43-yard line. When you got a situation like this, where you got a Jackson State team that's that's going to throw the ball regardless of the weather, regardless of what's happening, you're going to have to have a great offensive line play. You're going to have to have people standing in there making things happen. You look at your defensive line, Norwood Williams at the tackles and nose guard. Carl Tapo is really the middle linebacker, but Howard Clark with over 100 tackles coming in on the season. And Terrence Crimiel is a solid little cornerback. First and 10 balls at the 43-yard line. There's a blitz. Can't get to him. man to man. Can't overthrows his intended receiver. He was looking for Daniel Guy down the sideline. Looks like early on they're going to try and put the Alcorn, Alcorn State defense is going to try and put some pressure on Robert Kent by coming with all-out blitzes. That time there, they rushed eight against the three-wide receiver look there. You know, you have to be aware of, of Kent Washington. For Alcorn State, he's everywhere. This guy is a strong safety and second in sacks on the team. So it'll be second down and ten. Kent looking shotgun, then gets underneath his center, Aikens. 
In motion goes Thick Pin. Little pat on the back. Here's the snap. Pass over the middle. And pass is complete to his receiver, T.C. Taylor, the former quarterback. Quarterback to quarterback. I like that connection. We can talk <laughs> about that all day. Good thing about T.C. Taylor. Coach said he's a great athlete. He's making an adjustment to playing the wide receiver position. As you see here, they're blitzing. Kent's going to get used to getting hit all day. Good poise in the pocket. Taylor does a good job of getting open quickly when he knows his quarterback, and you get some experience in being a quarterback yourself. Get open quickly when the quarterback's under pressure. 18-yard pickup for T.C. Taylor, who has 30 receptions in his last five games, and now he's in motion as Kent from the shotgun. Back to pass. And quickly looking for Lawrence Story, and Story dropped the football. Story's been the hottest receiver on this team so lately. What's his story for dropping that last pass? <laughs> <laughs> but you know the great thing about it is T.C. Taylor made a key block coming off the outside to, for the quarterback to make this pass to the Story. Story's got great size, too. They're real excited about Lawrence Story. We'll call his name a little bit later on in the game, I'm sure. 6-5, I think we will. Tall receiver can get downfield. Tim Manning is now in the ball game, number five at the slot back spot. Good block by Manning. Plenty of time. Can't that that open. Touchdown! Team C. Taylor! T.C. Taylor <laughs> on a little flag pattern. And you got to credit the blocking of the offensive right. line in Manning. Plenty of time for Kent to loft it up. And a great catch by T.C. Taylor. That was Kenneth Thomas, Gary Atkins, Chris Hammonds. And Elliot and Matthews. Uh, Nate, you got to give credit to that running back. You saw oh, that, running back that, that, that blitz nice came block. and that linebacker was on his tail. Nobody saw that one. Great throw, great catch. And also, that, that just shows you the quarterbacks are great athletes right there because he still is a quarterback in heart, don't you think so? Yeah, he probably is, but he's a super player. <laughs> but if he keeps getting open like that, he'll be playing wide receiver for a long time. Well, it's very interesting. The comment came up as Brian Reynolds, by the way, is in to attempt the point after. Reynolds, the last time we were on, on, on the air, got a, a game-winning 33-yard field goal for Jackson State to knock off Tennessee State. The PAT is good. But we'll talk about T.C. in a second in that move from quarterback to wide receiver and how it may benefit him in the future right after this. Jackson State didn't need much time to jump on top. Took them just a little bit over a minute. They're up 7 0 with 12.03 left here in the first quarter as they prepare to kick the football off. Renard Reynolds will be your deep receiver, number 81 for Alcorn State. He's been pretty good in this department in terms of returning kicks and punts. And the Braves are going to need a nice return from this guy if they want to get in good field position against Jackson State. The defense for Jackson State has struggled somewhat this year, which would make it a good opportunity for Alcorn State to get something going offensively. And the return this time is taken out past the 30-yard line. That was on the return. Yancey Wright. Let's go back to the touchdown, gentlemen. Right here, you can see the offensive line doing a great job of blocking. Goes along to T.C. Taylor. He beats him on a, oh, let's call it a deep fade, a deep corner. Course. Corner out there. Great route. You see a little isolation here. Taylor beats his man 44. Once you get beat like that, Anytime you're trailing the, the wide receiver like that, that's not a good sign. They say if you're even, you're leaving. If you're trailing, <laughs> you might as well stop. <laughs> trailing, you're failing. <laughs> so here we go. First and ten, the Braves are trailing and looking to try to do something offensively as Sir Haver Fair is still your quarterback, number ten. Fake the pass, throws it over the middle. Pass was intended for Yancey right too high. Maybe they're trying to do a little bit of trickery here. I mean, everybody knows that Alcorn had its trouble protecting their quarterback. But they told us all in the uh, pregame that they were going to run the football right at Jackson State. Haven't attempted a running play yet, a pure running play by design outside of the quarterback draw. Well, you know, when you're dealing with uh, the record there, dealing with their O and, and whatever, <laughs> and the situation dictates that you have to do any and everything uh, under the sun, to, or well, under the clouds in this case, to make something happen. <laughs> and as, as we know, Nate, anytime you're trying to do some trickery, that means you're disguising something. Right. And that being them, them young offensive linemen for, for all corn is not up to par uh, 
I think my man George was telling us earlier that it was children of the corn. <laughs> <laughs> that offensive line, when you talk about Jason Lewis, the freshman from Houston, Ladarian Strauss is a freshman from Houston, James Bolden is a freshman center who at one time was a linebacker, yes. and he's a freshman. William Smith is your other guard. He's a freshman. And then the only uh, you know, veteran on this team is a sophomore, and Terrence Johnson, your tackle. Timeout for... Alcorn State, as they try to obviously tweak some things against this club. We saw them yesterday working out at the hotel, going through a walkthrough, making those last-minute preparations. And Coach Thomas told us, he said, listen, we really have to get this win. But on the other hand, I like how far this team has come. I like how they've developed through the weeks. Right. And, and, and they have developed <laughs> over, the, over the weeks. <laughs> Hey, and one of the things you can say, this is a team that hasn't been getting routed. To be 0-10, there's no 66-10s on the schedule. They've been in some close ball games. They just haven't been able to capitalize late in the game. And they'll get with experience. And experience has hurt them, and, and it only takes your coach. Your head coach is the only one who can see that development because as a fan, you cannot see it. Well, they had a single setback formation, and a flag is thrown before they could snap the football. Nancy Wright was your... Football. First start, offense, five yards, it remains second down. And I would assume that when you have the rain pounding on you and that wind whipping through, you get so antsy on that off the, you know, that line of scrimmage, you want to just go. Yeah, you get the long snap. You definitely want to go, but right here, in order for Alcorn to have a chance to beat Jackson State, who is a little more talented, a little more experienced, they have to play uh, mistake-free football. Absolutely. Single setback is Yancey Wright. Fair. Going to give it to Wright this time, and Wright picks up a couple of yards, runs into a whole host of defenders. Marcus Greer, number 96 at the bottom of the pile. But you know Wright will play a little bit of wide receiver too, so he's a valuable asset to this Alcorn's uh, offense. Fair is your quarterback. He's the senior from Starksville, Mississippi, completing 37% of his passes coming in. But he's thrown just three touchdowns, has three interceptions, so he loves to keep the ball on the ground. And you, you say he's uh, completed 37%? Of his passes? Yes, sir. If he was a baseball player, it would be great. But this is football. We need <laughs> up around 50 to be successful. You bat 370, you're okay, right? right? Here we go. Here's Fair looking to improve on 37%. Never can get it off as he's forced out of bounds again by Greer up at the 29-yard line. Took a shot there from Greer on the sideline, too. You got to learn to protect your body a little bit better than that there. Guy's not open either. Chuck it. Save your, save your team three or four yards of field position or just run the ball out of bounds and get out of there without getting hit more importantly. Chicoria will be the punter. Back deep for Jackson State again is Torrey Thigpen. He's standing at about the 38-39 yard line. Is, is he in relation to Yancey Thigpen? Not at all. No, not at all. But his father did play football here right. at Jackson State back in the day. And new coach Robert Hughes, who's the head coach, been with this school for 26 years as a coach. Good punt by Chicoria. It'll be down at the 20-yard line, a 50-yard punt for Ed Chicoria, the junior from Los Angeles, California. Jay, how do they get a man from California to come here to Alcorn State and punt the football? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I know you're a Cali right. man. See? I'm a California guy, and going to uh, Alcorn, Mississippi <laughs> was not a, a list of priorities right now, not to knock anything against the program. And he's doing a great job, so obviously it was worth the trip. Let's see if they go back to California, get some more players. Uh, then I say he had a recipe for success. Oh, there you go. See? Well, see, the, the understanding I get is that the players in the South are better players, so you want to come play with the best to, to test your skills. And beat up on you guys a little bit. Show you this up about going to football. Nathan McLaurin, an impressive-looking freshman, is your single setback behind Robert Kent. Ball is at the 20, as I said, after a 50-yard punt by Chikori. And here's McLaurin up the middle, and he picks up close to 10 yards on the carry. That was a great block, block by Gary Atkins, number 64 at the center. He's one of the best offensive linemen they got. The other guy that is talked about a lot is Kevin Thomas, the left guard. These guys made a nice hole. The center just maintained his block and stayed with the guy and made great room for the running back. See, because running backs, all they see is color and space. And right there, he saw a lot of space. T. 
C.C. Taylor is your wide receiver in motion. Again, single setback behind Kent. And he gets good blocking, but this time cannot get away from that linebacker. You talked about him, Nate. Howard Clark, number 44, making the play. Definitely a great play there. That was a great play. Great pressure on the quarterback. Nothing that kid can do there. What I like about what he did here, he's a freshman. Rather than force the ball downfield, take a look at your read. It's not there. Hold on to it. Just don't turn the football over. Retain it and get, come up on second down. He can pick up the first down now. So it looks like he lost about three yards on that play. That'll set up second down and 13. Tim Manning, number five in motion for Kent. Out of the shotgun. They blitzed it. Lobs one up. Pass was intended for Tory Thigpen. No flag thrown on the play. Just giving the wide receiver a chance to try and make a play for him. Once again, they brought a blitz. They're blitzing him pretty heavy. Throw the ball up there, allow your wide receiver to make a play for you. And I'll tell you what, Thigpen almost came down with that ball. Or the pass interference might have been called questionable borderlines. You take a look at Robert Kent's stats there, 225 yards per game in offense. And believe me, folks, I'm impressed with this guy. That's only going to go up. Courtney Young was your defender on the play who looked like he had gotten in Thigpen's way, blocked his visuals for the catch. But nonetheless, it's third down and 13. Here's Kent again downfield. And that time, you're going to get the flag. It was intended for Daniel Guy. He stopped and got dragged down before the ball got there. That was a nice play by your quarterback, putting it out front, trying to give your uh, receiver a chance to jest on it. And right there he did, and the DB, not knowing where the ball was, had to reach up and grab it. Fearing of a breakthrough. Can I argue with you for a minute? You give him was a terrible pass by the quarterback. <laughs> that was, As a quarterback, one of the things you want to do, you never want to throw the ball one guy against two guys. Look at 47 here, dropping back. He's got a chance at a pick as well as the cornerback in there. So you, you want to stay away from those one-on-two matchups. But we you got, got a flag. It was a great job getting the flag. No, <laughs> but, you know, I'm not going to argue with you here on national TV, but that was a great pass. If he threw it, if the receiver would have bent out further, it would have been a great pass. I, I would not agree with you there, Jay Walker. The receiver almost got his head knocked off. Hey, First and 10. <laughs> Ball at the 42, movement on the offensive line, and we'll be moving back. I just figured I'd Yeah, we're supposed to be the referee up that. here. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, believe me, I was one of those refs just standing ball. back. Offside, defense, five yards, it remains first down. I, I know one thing that me and Mr. Walker can agree on. So far, the offensive line has done a nice job for the Jackson State the Jaguars. And, and, and the backs also, and receivers have picked yes, up some have. blitzing linebackers early part of the game. 9.30 left here in the first quarter. It's already 7-0 Jackson State. They have the football and they're driving downfield looking for some more. First and five after the penalty against Alcorn State offsides. Three re receivers split to the right, but here comes T.C. Taylor. The little motion thing, little pack thing, more blitzing. And Alcorn State may have paid the price. He was looking for Lawrence Story, who had single coverage downfield. If they continue this type of defensive scheme, I'm going to tell you what kind of stats. I'm going to be a psychic here again, since I did tell you the number one black collar football team was two months ago. <laughs> but the kind of stats you're going to get from Robert Ooh, Kent. you? Ken, <laughs> Ken is going to go, he'll go something like 20 for 38 with a whole lot of yards and a lot of big plays. Because right now, Alcorn saying, in order for you to beat us, you're going to have to beat us with the home run ball. And he's trying to do it. If he goes that high, he may go 11 for 28, something like that. So basically, you're going to get hit. You know you're going to get hit, but you'll give up your body if you know you get a big play. So how do you counter? Do you throw the quick pass, the quick out? Well, they want you to throw the quick pass. Second down and five. Oh, wow. That was great effort Taylor. right there by T.C. Taylor. Could not make the catch. I like how he gave his receiver a chance to make a play for him. That would have been a spectacular catch. He's coming under a lot of fire there. But this is a fantastic attempt at the football here by T.C. Taylor, the former quarterback. Ball's up, a lot of air on it. Oh, he almost pulled it in there. As you go higher and higher up, ball touches your hands. You got to catch it. But that would have been a great catch. So now it's third down and five. And Kent will remain in that shotgun. They talked about the fact that it was a no-huddle offense. They were going to keep it going. They don't waste any time getting that ball snapped. Taylor, again, off his back foot, throwing downfield. This time he completes it to his receiver, Daniel Guy, to 
the 25-yard line. See, they're giving up the home run ball. There's no safety help there at all. All he's doing is called the old chuck and duck. Remember when Warren right. Moon played in the NFL as the chuck and duck? He's under the shotgun, getting the ball, getting his hands on the laces, and just letting it go. One-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside, getting dragged to the ground. As you see here, Daniel Guy does a good job of adjusting to the football. 36, he's trailing again. He's trailing, you're failing, like we said earlier. And that, Alcorn State is bringing more players than they can block, but they're giving, they're giving up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and it's crushing them at this point. And Tim Batts is just a freshman defender back there, and they're putting a lot of pressure on their young secondary to make the one-on-one -on -one plays. And another flag is thrown before the snap. It looked like he's, uh, excuse me, Robert Cannon taking the snap, went down to one knee. But again, offsides charge to the Braves in another situation where it's first and five for the Tigers. I understand when, you, when you're trying to blitz, you're trying to force something to happen, but you have to calculate these things. You have to think about it. Your personnel that you're setting out on them islands, can they handle the mental, mental uh, disparity that's going to happen? Because they're going to get depressed out there, be, getting beat continuously one on one. Big pin is in motion. McLaurin's your single setback. They blitz him again. Man to man touchdown. And this time, they go somewhere they rarely go, and that's to a tight end. Kendrick Travis makes the catch. That's the fifth catch of the season for a tight end. If it's one on one, there's enough balls to go around. You beat your guy one time, I'll get you the ball. What I like here more importantly is he took the snap from underneath the center. Shotgun snap, the ball hangs in the air. Gets right underneath. You beat your guy right off the line of scrimmage, one on one coverage. There's nobody to help out behind you. It's almost a recipe for disaster for Alcorn State if you got a quarterback this is this accurate. And the offensive line is doing a great job. They're picking up their guys, but like I said once before, they are bringing more guys than uh, Jackson State can block. But the quarterback is accounting for that extra man and finding the open receiver. Reynolds will come in to attempt the point after. Tim Manning holds the football, kick is up, and the kick is good. 29 left here in the first quarter. Jackson State is jumping all over the Braves in a hard way. Mississippi, George Johnson along with Jay Walker, Nate Newton, and also Joe Claire, who we finally caught up with down on the sidelines. What's up, Joe? What's up? Now you know me. I'm out here having a wonderful time. All of you who ever played football at home, you know it's the perfect day. It's it's muddy, people out here ready to go home. I mean, it's going to be a good game. I'm going to have a good time no matter what. What? Back up to y'all upstairs. Ah! What, Joe, what? Joe doesn't want to talk about going home. Yeah, so we want to party a little hey, bit. Hey, this is, this is football, man. Play it outdoors. Look, we're in a stadium, man. This thing here look worse than our, the, 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 what's the stadium up there in Green Bay, man? This thing here about to Let fall down. Feel. We jamming up in there, baby. It's cold. And, hey, the big man is feeling good. A.C. Butch Lambert Field is where they're playing. It's Reynolds back to receive the uh -oh. kick. Squirts through his hands. He's going to try to take it out. Ill at five and tackle at the two-yard line. That's what that inexperience will do to him. He's got a very inexperienced team, and that's just an inexperienced mistake there. First of all, the ball should have been fielded by somebody. You got to run up and catch it. You never let a ball just go unaccounted for. And secondly, you got to let that ball go into the end zone and just take the touch back, trying to create something. And that's what happens during 0 and 10 seasons. And talking to Coach Thomas yesterday, he, he said he can see the fruits of the labor, but right now the tree is bare because these brothers are making some bad moves. You hear me? They got to think before you sleep, you know? Well, that was a costly mistake as Sir Haver Fair now finds himself deep in his own territory on the two-yard line, and they haven't been able to make anything happen offensively yet. Third possession of the ball game for the Braves. Eye formation. They give it to Wright. Wright trying to move the pile, and the pile moves him back inside his own end zone. But with forward progress, it'll probably be marked at the three. But you got uh, Vernon Young and Marcus Grill and all those guys, man, just pounding him back. Uh, Edward Reese, the guy we talked about earlier, they, they all in there just gang tackling, getting to the ball. They're taking advantage. When you're playing out in the cold weather like this, the 
who the team that's hitting the hardest it's gonna make the team that's that, that's not as physical feel it and it, it, it gets into your mind mentally man when it gets into you mentally then you start worrying about oh it's cold <laughs> it's raining let's get the game over it's working with all my mental right now <laughs> high formation again to right right finding little to no room Ed Reese did a great job of shedding off tackles there to make that stop. And as a linebacker, if you're going against a team that is supposed to run the ball and they haven't been running the ball, once you pin them back against their end zone and they got to run the ball, you got to be licking your chops. That's Corey Barner right there who was leading the charge. Barner, just a sophomore from Moultrie, Georgia, converted from cornerback to safety because of his aggressive play. Third down now, and let's make it seven, a long seven. I formation, right again, and right runs right into Bonner at about the 10 yard line. That was a nice block by William Smith and James Bolden, the ex linebacker. They made a nice hole. I know it wasn't for a first here, but they, that's progress. And I can see right now what Coach is talking about. They say, you see it when you have any experience. Now you, they'll have plays where they'll make nice plays and, and consistency as you do it over and over, you get better at it. So this team will get better as time goes on. Even though our head coach, Coach Thomas, is taking some heat from the boosters and everybody for losing that game. To Prairie <laughs> Lost to Prairie View earlier, earlier this year. Tough loss for this club. Last week they had Alabama A&M, who has a chance of going to the SWAT championship game. They had them in the fourth. Right. There have been four games that Alabama are at Alcorn State has led going into the fourth quarter that they lost. And sometimes the inexperience will bite you. You don't know how to win games, right. how to close the deal. And when you're dealing with a young team that's offensive line, and they take a lot of heat, but as years go on, as years go on for these young guys, and they stay together, and everybody come back and, and work during the off season, the whole team would build. Because I believe as an offensive lineman, everything starts up front, you know. And so these guys are young right now. Offense, five yards. It remains fourth down. And a penalty against Alcorn State. And as I was saying, it all comes back to your offensive line. Let me, ask you, let me ask you guys this question. Everybody knows that winning is contagious. Yes. Is losing just as contagious? Worse. So if you've got freshman football players and they're young, do you expose them to all the losing that uh, has taken place this year? Well, you do, but as long as the head coach and everybody stay upbeat and you do positive things like make that uh, big block sometime and uh, be in games, you, you have things that you can look back at and try to be positive on. Jacorius Punt. And Tory Thigpen will let that thing bounce, and another flag is thrown as this one is downed at the 47-yard line. They block in the back. That's an illegal block. And another flag has been thrown for some uh, extra activity over there towards the um, Jackson State Jackson State's bench. 42-yard punt for Chicoria. but yet we have to wait and see how the officials are going to sort this thing out. I think you're going to have a block in the back and on Jackson State, and you also may get some type of taunting penalty by Alcorn State or unsportsmanlike conduct because it came well after the play. Well, yeah, it, it was uh, two players over there having a good time going at it. Yeah, Nick. It's blocked in the back and a personal foul. Do they offset each other? No, not in this case because the personal foul came after the initial play. There's Robert Hughes, a 1967 graduate of Jackson State University. And his team leads by 14. And they may be trailing because they're taking chances, they're blitzing, and they're coming after Robert Kent. Right. And one of the things that we alluded to earlier, if the defense is going to blitz you, you're going to take a beating. But as a quarterback, you give up your body in order to get the big play. Look here, hit after hit after hit, and it's not the offensive line's fault, Nate. Right there, it's a lot of people coming in. They're leaving the corners exposed, but they're bringing everything. There's Howard, Howard Clark making a hit. I mean, they're coming from every angle, up the middle, outside, and they, they're testing this young quarterback, but you know he's meeting the, the challenge head on, and he's doing a super job at this point. Sure, and you can't look at the film and tell there, but the Jackson State offensive line is actually doing a pretty good job. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're giving him time, but I'm just saying they're bringing it from everywhere so it can be confusing, and they're doing a nice job of picking up the guys that they were supposed to get on. 
like we say, Ken will give up his body here. And he'll probably, you know, he'll take those hits for the remainder of the game. He won't have his best game percentage-wise, but yardage-wise, I wish I could be out there. Hey, 1994 playoff out of <laughs> Yeah. The lights have come on here. At Veterans Memorial Stadium, first and ten. Kent eludes one tackler. Kent still on his feet. Kent with some room, and he slides and does the smart thing after picking up seven yards on the play. That was just pure athletic ability there. Did a great job of avoiding the one tackler, making him miss, which you kind of wish he wouldn't come unaccounted for. As you take a look here, you'll see him drop back. One guy's coming unaccounted for. You see Washington coming in there. Kent's 6'5", 205. You can't arm tackle that guy. You got to wrap him up. And he did a good job making him miss and a better job of getting down. But Kent has been coming all game. This guy is a serious player. They talked highly of him last night. He will, he will move up. He had a linebacker. He will come to the outside like he did then as a strong safe thing come. He will make a few plays. If he get his hands on his good, things will happen. Well, Ken Washington yesterday, we saw him get his picture taken, and he lined up with the linebackers. And we said, Ken, aren't you a safety? He said, quite hey. frankly, I'm a football player. And you know, coming from the uh, old school, from the, the deep south, that's what we have, football players. <laughs> we will position you, and you just play football. That's you know, what the coaches used to tell you. That was not a setup line for you, but you <laughs> took advantage of it anyway, I see. I, I'm assuming you're from the south somewhere. <laughs> Probably, I'm know. from the dirty <laughs> south. Maybe from the <laughs> south somewhere. You look at your yards already, 104 yards passing for Kent. Jackson State has only run for 14 yards, but on the season, they rush for about 146 a game as a team. They pass for 242 yards. And they're averaging 33 points a game, Jackson State is. That's the best in the slack. And again, Kent goes down to one knee. What is, is that? Just to make sure you don't come hit me after I, if there's a broken up play, don't hit me. Yeah, well, what it is is that the center is seeing that if any time the defensive lineman jumps offside into the neutral zone, the center will snap the ball. And as a quarterback, you're not ready for the ball. So the center will snap it early. First down. And, and he's been instructed just to get that ball. Don't try and do anything spectacular. Go down on the knee and let's get the sure five yards. But the right guard and the center need to be careful with that with that snap like that because it could have been easily called on them on that certain play there. Five minutes left here in the first quarter, and already Alcorn State has seven penalties for 55 yards. Kent to Story. Story was held up, but the ball may have been uncatchable, so they're not going to throw a flag on that one. Alcorn refused to stop blitzing. <laughs> they say, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us and you're going to pay for it. And your quarterback will be in the hot tub. Look right here. Guys coming in every gap. The, the, the center's like, who do I have? Block. It confused them. There's a lot of people coming. I'll tell you what, what Kent can do to help, up, to help out with that blitz is he can get up under the center. Anytime that ball's hanging in the air, that ball's taking a, hanging in the air for a second, and the defense is getting that much closer to you before you can even grip the laces. Kent still paying the price, though, after releasing that football. This time, a quick pass to Daniel Guy on second down, and Guy may have lost half a yard on that play. At this time, the corners are getting better. Now, they have been beat twice for touchdowns, but right, right here, the corner is getting better because the blitz is coming more and more, and it's getting to our, our young quarterback in, back there. And you may have a point there with the shotgun snap versus getting up on the center so he can stop quick on a three-step drop. Yeah, that ball's kind of hanging in there. It's not a crisp right. shotgun snap, but that's a, it's an art form being able to snap on the shotgun. Especially in the rain, in the mud, and it's cold. <laughs> Third down. Here they come again. Touchdown. Kent took his time. Kent delivers. Oh. It is dropped by T.C. Taylor. T.C. Taylor. T.C. <laughs> T.C. Come on, T.C. You know you're my man. Oh, you got man. to pick it up, baby. You got to make that play. That's that wide receiver coming out in him. See, that has nothing to do with the quarterback he used to be. <laughs> That's that wide. He does a great job. As you see here, the shotgun staff hangs in the air a little bit, grips it, lets it go. He's got him beat by three yards. Oh, he just let the ball sneak up on him and drift over his right-hand shoulder. It could have been an easy touchdown, and that would have been number two for him on his way to a possible MVP, but now it's up for grabs still. Fourth and ten, and they're going for it. And here's Kent now rolling to his left. Stops, goes back the other way. And a good defensive play. Ballcorn State right there made by Lewis Green, the linebacker. He read it. He came up. 
he wanted the interception because he was, he was getting ready to go through the guy's body. So, hey, good play by Green. And that showed some of Robert Kent's inexperience as a quarterback. As a freshman, you kind of think, well, I can go over and run all the way to the left and throw it back to the right and not have any consequences to pay for it. The more experience you get, the more you learn that that's just not going to happen. Are we ready to call him a sophomore yet after 10 games under his belt? Never a sophomore until your report card <laughs> says you're a sophomore. Until <laughs> your scholarship papers say that. You got it. I formation now as Alcorn State takes over first and 10 at the 30. And Fair this time going to hold on to the football and pick up a good nine yards on that play. Finally brought down by number 56, Eddie Reese, but not until he gets close to a first down. That's what Alcorn needs to do. That's the best looking play they've run so far. Establish a running game. I mean, we know that your quarterback's hitting 37% of his passes. Allow him to run the football where he feels comfortable because, to go. Because when you have a young line, I mean, it's easier to, to drive block than it is to pass block. It's a, it's, it's a lot more technique involved in pass blocking than it is running. Because running, you just hook up, you get mad, and you drive a guy off the ball, and you use your buttocks to drive with them strong legs. Raston is your up back as this time Fair fakes it in his gut, holds on to the football, and then wrestles his way for about a two-yard pickup. It is a first down, though. That's what they needed as Fair gets up. Fair is your leading rusher on this football team. And at one point, he was carrying the ball so often that you thought he was a running back. He's gained 261 yards coming in. His longest run was for 72 yards, and he has scored four times on the ground. He had to learn to get that ball to the fullback because he was up in there spot free. And that's Quentin Raston, who had a good football game last week, scored two touchdowns. Fair this time. Gonna got him right open. Oh, and he missed him. And he finds his fullback, Raston. Raston had a knee on the ground, and they're going to mark him down at about the 42. Ronald Gilmore, the wide receiver at the top of the field, was running all by himself. I, I'm, I'm curious how he got so open. The DB must have slipped when he fell down or something. We have a wide angle here. Uh, we won't be able to see it here. Down the field, he was wide open. But he still does a good job of sticking with the read, hitting the wide open guy. Check, it, check him out here. Rand, Ronald Gilmore, wide open. Wide hey, hit open. me. Hey, I want to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just got there. <laughs> <laughs> I took care of it. <laughs> 2.21, the clock continues to roll left here in the first. Yeah, you, there you Inside go. Inside handoff this time, and Raston bowls his way close to midfield. He'll be a couple of yards shy. He came right off that right side, man, right off of William Smith and Terrence Johnston block. That was nice. We're going to get him. On this on the play here, the quarterback just turns out, give it to Big Ross, and he, turn, he goes up on the right side, makes a nice hard run. And no side to side run. Boy, he reminds me of Big Booby Clark. Boy, that's a big getting, that's a big man, Ralston, boy. 5'10, 280 pound junior from Atlanta, Georgia, last week had 80 yards against Alabama AM and two touchdowns. This time they can't decide that they want to give it to him. Fair said, no, I want it. And Fair goes for the first pass. They arguing over who's going to hold on to the football. I tell you, uh, Ferris has got to be a strong man to be able to take that ball from Big Roster like that. Big Roster, Big Roster, he turned Big Roster to the side holding on to that thing. Look at Big Roster. As you, as you can see right, he comes out. Big Roster wants it and tries to continue to hold it. But Ferris said, give it up, big fella. It's all mine. I got the first. First down. And as a coach, you can't be mad at either one of those guys because they both feel they have the ability to get it done. And when you're owing whatever, you got to go for what you know. <laughs> let's fight over. Let's do whatever. Let's, let's get attitude out let's, here. Let's yeah. win the game. So it's first down. Ball is at the 46-yard line. Fair's going to hold on to it. Fair's got some blocking. And Fair could not get to the outside. Great defensive play for Jackson State. And that looks like that was Xavier Denson. That was actually Cecil Forbes who was able to play off that block and still make the tackle. That was a nice play. That was a, that was a game saving, I mean, TD saving run, uh, tackle right there, excuse me. That was a good looking quarterback draw there. Offensive lineman, big number 78, got down there, put his back into somebody and helped open up a hole for him. Might have been 79. 11 yard pickup for Fair on that one. First and 10 now at the 35 yard line. Reynolds goes in motion. 
Inside handoff, Ratson. Ratson said, you're not taking it from me this time. <laughs> Ratson runs into Elgin Andrews, who stands him up, but not before the big guy picks up close to another five yards. And that's Williams, uh, William Smith and Terrence Johnson did a nice job opening up the hole with James Bowler, the ex-linebacker, bringing that defensive mentality over to the other side. And believe it or not, fellas, they have sustained a drive here. Long drive. Might take it on into the quarter. Yeah, they're, they're driving run. here. They may run a they may not run a play. We've got eight seconds left. There's your current drive right there. Seven plays, 40 yards. Eric Moore back in the booth with us, as you can tell, because we got the stats and they right on. Yes. So we go to commercial break because we've played one quarter of football. The Tigers of Jackson State have the lead, but here come the Braves. Here. Jackson State has the lead over Alcorn State and getting touchdowns because the Braves gambling, they're blitzing, and Robert Kent is on the mark. First going 25 yards right here to former quarterback T.C. Taylor. That gave them a 7-0 lead. Then off the blitz, Kendrick Travis gets loose. He gets the touchdown reception from 20 yards out. That is your scoring summary, and that is why Jackson State has the 14-0 lead. George Johnson along with Jay Walker, Nate Newton, Joe Claire's on the field. Second down and five for Alcorn State, who has put together a seven-play drive here. Thanks to Sir Haver Fair and some pretty good running. But on that play right there, the defense stuffs them. Let's take a look now at our Southwest Airlines first quarter stats. Jackson State with eight first downs. They've thrown the ball for 105 yards, and look at that, the Braves with one yard passing. That one to Quentin Raston. Rushing yards, Alcorn State getting the bulk of those rushing yards on this drive right here. And they've had the football for 10 minutes. And look at the penalties uh, favoring uh, Jackson State. Alcorn State here, boy, 755. Gotta pick that game up. Gotta, gotta be a little more disciplined. So here we go, third down. About four and a half yards to go. Fair and whistles all over the place. And let's hope it's not another penalty against the Braves. That really has just been shooting them in the foot all day long. Offense, it is. five yards. It remains third down. And that's the kind of things that can just kill a drive. Because they need to score here some type of points. Three, Woo! six, mm. or seven will be something nice because to make this game <laughs> To, where they can change their game plan on defense because if they get a score, they may get a little more conservative on defense as far as Alcorn to not to blitz so much and, and setting their corners out there by themselves. So here we go, third down and 10. Looks like a power eye formation. That's fair, time, fair, looking downfield, fair, oh. finds his receiver, touchdown! <laughs> All good state! Great catch by Ronald Gilmore! And that young offensive line held strong that time for the Alcorn Braves. 35-yard oh. touchdown play from Sir Haver Fair to Ronald Gilmore. Look Fair. right here, up close. They got the pocket spread. He found the lane. He threw it. Receiver made a great play. Got just enough separation to make the play and got the ball right inside the pylon because all you need is one foot in to be eligible in college football. Mario Mouton was your defender on that play. And he's a pretty good defensive back, but good separation, as you mentioned. Just that little bump inside gave him the separation. Jay, do you agree? I definitely agree there. <laughs> now, that was a great throw. It was a great Well, all of a sudden, we've got a good football game again. 13.45 left here in the second quarter. And it's just a seven-point lead for Jackson State. Back in this thing, at least here in the second quarter, they're able to drive the football downfield and get themselves a touchdown. Thanks to a touchdown pass from Sir Haver Fair to Ronald Gilmore. And here they are on the kickoff and trying to get to the outside for Jackson State was Torrey Thigpen. But good coverage by Alcorn State as the ball will be marked inside the 20-yard line at about the 17. And anytime you can get a team inside their 20, that means that you they have to have an extra first down. You always look to get outside the 20, or maybe to the 30, because that cuts down on that extra first down. 
because going 80 yards, if you check the statistics, doesn't happen very often. I mean, it's, it's so high, it's like 70% that you don't make it. 70% or more that you don't make a touchdown. So 30%, 30% you score. And if this were baseball, that would be okay. Hey, yes, but this is football. <laughs> <laughs> Single setback behind Kent. Kent is hit. And Kent trying to get rid of that football. Kenny Washington came up. And like they say, I'm just a football player, baby. And right here, Coach Thomas refused to let up. He's going to see if this young guy can stand in here in the cold, in the rain. Right here, he drops back. He's, he's on his receiver, so he don't feel it. He don't have that presence yet to feel that backside pressure. And Kenny has a nice hit on it, and he makes him uh, overthrow it there. Kenny has been all over the place. We're watching number two. I mean, he has been all over the place for the Braves of Alcorn State. Second down and ten after the incomplete pass. This one is complete to the tight end. And making the catch is Kendrick Travis, who already has a touchdown reception of 20 yards. And I like what the Jackson State offense has done here. I just don't necessarily like the execution. What, what they've decided to do is bring in a two tight end set. They're bringing in the extra tight end for blocking, as you see here. But the tight end's not doing a great job. He's getting beat again by our guy, Mr. Washington. So the tight end's got to do a better job. I like the game plan. I just don't like the execution. He should have been called for a holding there. Eight-yard pickup. Excuse me, Nate. Eight-yard pickup, third down and two. <laughs> Nate's it's, just fine. it's okay, guys. He just had enough of a uh, key statement there. And this time, trying to go again to the tight end, who looks like he may have made the catch. Marcus Rogers. And the other tight end, Marcus Rogers, number 88 with the reception. Boy, it's nice when you got two tight ends that can make a catch. And Coach Hughes has made not a halftime adjustment, but a quarter adjustment. And that just goes to show you, that hats off to him to make that adjustment, to slow down the blitz, to start taking what they give them instead of forcing everything long. Wow, nice oh, catch. He didn't catch that ball. Oh, you don't think <laughs> so? You don't he think didn't so? catch that ball. Well, they're going to credit no. him with his second catch of the year. That's just his second hey, reception. It's only cheating if you get caught. <laughs> He didn't catch that ball. And the ref called it. It wasn't like the players called it, so the ref called it. It's okay. So he got the first down on that play. Ball's now out at the 28-yard line as Kent goes back to pass. Has a receiver. Great defensive play. Intercepted by Tim Bax. Bax getting beaten earlier in the ball game, number 36, and comes up with a nice little interception for Alcorn State. I think the hits on the quarterback is beginning to take its toll because once again, the second time here, Jay, he's throwing, I think he's doing a triple coverage here. We can see this again. Yeah, go with Jay. Here, and he had a little bit more time than he thought because he's been getting blitz. He's getting a little angst. I got to hurry up and get rid of the football. He had all day to make his reads and threw the ball one on two. You're not going to win unless you're throwing to Jerry Rice. And even then, your eyes aren't that good. And credit bats also. Nice catch with the hands. Didn't have to bring it <laughs> At in. At the highest point. Doing a good job. So first and ten now for Alcorn State. They're looking to tie things up. They got a little momentum on their side. High too. formation. Fair holds on. Fair runs the football. Fair gets down inside the 40. And as you take a look at the Alcorn sideline, guys are jumping around. They're jittery. They're excited. They, they're realizing, hey, we can play with these guys. And I talked to the coach before the game, and one of the things that Coach Thomas was telling me was a lot of our players went to high school with some of the Jackson State players. It's kind of an interstate rivalry. We're all from the state of Mississippi, so we don't think they're better than we are. And the guys I have, they're getting a chance to play now. And the other guys that went to high school with these other guys, they're basically backups for Jackson State. It's interesting you say that. Dwayne Johnson, a linebacker from Jackson State, was with Alcorn State last night visiting his good buddy, Nicky Davis, a fullback, number 11. Inside handoff. This time, though, they give it to an even bigger fullback and Raston. Big Raston. I like that guy. You got to say Raston. <laughs> and if you're noticing, they're running to that right side that with, with the center, James Bolden, William Smith, and Terrence Johns. They just pounded it up and they say, we'll take one yard. We'll take two. We'll take three. Because as the game goes on and the, and the defense get tired and tired, those plays are turning to five, ten, ten, fifteen yard run. Well, they're going to need about five yards to get a first down here. It's third down. Let's say four yards to go for a first. This time, Rastin! Rastin! Look at Rastin! At the 10! At 
the five. Big Rusty. <laughs> Big Rusty. <laughs> and he's rumbling. Okay. And he's running. <laughs> and he's rumbling, rumbling, rumbling and so enough stuff. Oh, that, that, well, he is doing it. Big Ryan. Rusty. Now, you alluded to that earlier. You said with the young offensive line, the easiest thing for them to do is to rumble. Yeah, here we look here. He comes off outside, makes a nice move to the outside for a big man. He's going. He, he, he's he's puffing. He's huffing. He's puffing. He's and he lets his momentum takes him to the end zone. 37 yard run for Quentin Raston. That's three touchdowns in two weeks for the big guy. Kick they, is up. Kick is. Good, and we're tied up at 14. Have they found a diamond in the rough? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. 10.50 left here in the first half. We're all knotted up at 14. Rusty. Hey, McDonald's, we love to see you smile. And I'm smiling right now. We got a good football game right here. Had a great Braves time. came in here and they said, listen, we have no wins to our credit. Bet. But this is a rivalry. Show them guys club. out there dancing on them. the field, man. Show the Braves out there dancing on the field. The big Roston is the man right now. 37-yard touchdown run there. Three plays, 44 yards. Minute and 32, which is what you want. You know, they, they would have liked to take a little bit more time as long as they ended up with a touchdown. But the good thing about it was they capitalized on it. So they're getting in the red zone and they're scoring. So there is some potential there. And I kind of can see what Coach what Coach Thomas is talking about, saying he's laid down uh, some right. pretty good fruit. Right, he, right. And you know what? You know, you, you tease a guy and you mess with the guy. <laughs> but, hey, if you check these Braves out, they're circling, they're having fun. They're out there on the kickoff. They're just doing things. They're dancing around. Right. There's excitement for a young team. That's what you want to see, excitement. Quentin Raston with 51 yards rushing in the ball game. And, and they get too excited here. It's going to be an offsides oh. on them. A little pumped up. Hey, when everybody's flowing, everybody's flowing. Special team is the ready to go. Against the kicking team. Five yards. Now I got a little delay game, and that comes with the inexperience. When you're young and you're excited, you really don't know how to handle it, you lose your focus a little bit. As Coach Thomas is looking on, teaching his guys, and I think this would be a learning experience for him. You know, you're not necessarily worried about wins and losses. You just want to make sure that you have a learning experience and the guys are learning from their mistakes. That seems to be the key. He's not lacking for intensity, I can tell you that. So Alcorn State, thanks to the 35-yard touchdown run by Quentin Raston back in this game, but now I have to kick off from the 30-yard line. Tory Thigpen is your deep back, and he's going to take it inside his 10-yard line at about the 7-yard line, take it out to the 24, so we make that a 16-yard return. Let's go on down to the sidelines, and Joe Claire, who's getting warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you're trying to say, Joe. Joe get your boogie back on. Joe, yeah, Joe, we, we didn't hear you, but quite frankly, with that intro, we didn't need to hear you. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we got that lip jamming. sync. We got that lip sync, baby. You know, we, we had the music going for you. And all I need is to get my boogie down. <laughs> so here we go, first and 10 at the 25-yard line. And this time, Damian Ducksworth finds no room whatsoever to operate under. And I know that can't be Mr. Washington in number is two. Ken Washington. <laughs> he just likes to mix it up. He yeah. Certain players he's just that a football cover. player. <laughs> but mind you, he's not the 1994 player of the year. We have that up in the booth with us and Jay Walker. Absolutely. Here's Ducksworth, Damian getting free. Fumble. Fumble the football. And it looks like it may all belong to Alcorn State. Looks like it. This is when they're kicking and scratching right now. Now, this is when they need big Nate Newton at here, the bottom of that pile. And here come the Braves. They're running our way. They're running our way. And one thing you can expect is we will see Rasta. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look. Is it going to be Alcorn's ball? Yes, it is. Ball was recovered by Tyrone Parsons. Right here, this is the ball being kicked around. 
They gets in there and get it. Eric Roach did a good job Eric of getting Roach. in there and stripping the guy from the backside. Parsons was the beneficiary for that. He's excited about it. One thing that Coach Jackson State didn't want to see was a turnover because our corner started to develop a little bit of momentum and get ready for your little dose of Ralston. <laughs> Parson has intercepted three balls this year. Now add a fumble recovery to his stats. Fair. First and ten. Downfield. Oh, and almost intercepted. You can't go in the cookie jar that they gave, often. They gave him the interception. They're going to say interception. Yes, because the ground cannot create a fumble. He had that until he hit the ground. Interception made by Kenny Bryant. Now he's doing a little shaking and baking. See what the coach did. He got a little carried away. A turnover is just like receiving a turnover. He went to capitalize and go for the home run ball. Good call by the referee. He did have possession of that ball when it hit the ground. Boy, take me back to the old school. Fab threw an ill-advised pass there. Take the, me back to old school. If the that's DB an interception, there, he didn't have it. The DB there had the position. He saw the ball. He went up and got it at his highest point. And he argued his case effectively, too. He, yes, Thank he, you. Sure he got did. up saying, I had it. Yeah, he sure did. So now first and ten, and here's Nathan McLaurin. A flag thrown. And it looked like it was thrown towards that offensive line where they call holding. Yeah, yeah. Nate, you know what they did. <laughs> right here. Tell your boy stop holding. Right here, either Kevin Thompson or Gary Atkins got drove back by the defensive player, and he was, and the defense player was flailing his arms and got called for a holding. Boy, we are getting just bombarded up here. You think it's tough on the guys down on the field. We got the <laughs> rainstorm coming at us out here. No windows in here. And you know that they call this veteran, Veterans Memorial Stadium. Yeah, you got to be a veteran to deal with <laughs> this. It, it was built back when the veterans <laughs> first hit the ground from World War II. They should call it Pilgrim Memorial Stadium. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's what black college football yeah, is all about, we, baby. Hey, it ain't pretty. I'm sorry y'all caught with my jean jacket on up here. <laughs> you got to work hard for this, though, hey. baby. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Be yeah, baby. Is finest. I'm getting hyped up over here. <laughs> we are dapped and overcome. We are the U.S. Marines. <laughs> <laughs> we do more in 20 minutes. <laughs> so it's first down after the penalty. Here comes the blitz. Screen pass to Nathan McLaurin. McLaurin couldn't shake a couple of tackles. Coming up to make the hit was Carl Tapo, the inside linebacker, number 45. One of the things, one of the things that's happening here is they're getting a little bit more conservative with their play calling. They're going to a screen here that was run pretty well. 92 just couldn't make the tackle, but he was backed up by that Alcorn linebacker who's been all over the field today, Mr. Clark, trying to make all the plays he can. <laughs> What's happened since the momentum is changing this game, Jackson State's getting a little tentative in their play calling. They don't want their quarterback to get hit all game. They're starting to run the ball a little bit more, trying to slow down this Alcorn momentum. That's what Coach Hughes is being smart, you know. Pick your plays, pick your plays. Second and 17, and look who comes up and makes the tackle again, number two. You know, it seems like every game we find a safety or somebody a who just dominates defensively, and this week it seems to belong to this guy right here, Kenny Washington. And the thing about it, look at his, his tape is off his shoes, <laughs> his spat them fell off, his, his shirt's outside his pants, man. This guy's a warrior from the old days, man. He just don't care. He lined up at defensive end now, <laughs> fin the rush, on, on a big on a big tackle, he don't he don't count a big tight end. He's gonna try and get to his man. Third, and let's say 16 yards to go for a first. Plenty of time, almost intercepted. Good defensive play for Alcorn State, and it looks like it was number 47. And since they don't have a 47 on their roster, that's just black college football. That's it just was black dude. college football, baby. <laughs> that, was that. <laughs> that was the guy. The man just made the play. We saw it out there in TV land. Sometimes we have to go and improvise. As you take a look here for the first time, you see you might be able to recognize who the punter is for the Jackson State offense or the special teams, and that's Robert Kent. He's that good an athlete. Kind of Randall Cunningham is when Randall was a quarterback at UNLV. He was also the punter and made All-American as a punter. Many people don't know that. And can't punt 40 yards per punt for Robert Kent. Second in the swag. That, that was blocked. almost blocked. Reynolds will take it at the 37. Make a move and then pick up about four yards before getting popped. So eight minutes left here in our first half. And we're all knotted up at 14.
The fans are braving the storm as the Braves <laughs> have made this a good one. Tied up at 14 apiece against Jackson State, who came in at 6-4 and four on the season, 3-3 three and three in conference play. Don't get away from Ross. And right here, we, we have to stay with the running game, make things happen. And there's and Ross. Here we go. Big Ross and Lena. Right up, right up your center. Right up, James. James Bolden, the ex linebacker, six feet, 240. A freshman. He's height. William Smith, the right guard. He's height. And they're just running the ball right up the middle. And you know what? We're getting a little too hyped because I think it's Raston. And we done made okay, we done turned okay. his name into <laughs> Raston. A big Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> but he's I a Raston. Raston. Okay. Quit so, Raston. I look but we can still give it that you. Rrr. <laughs> you can still do that R if you want to. Pick up a free for Raston. Watch Second down and seven. Ooh. Fair. The Rostin and nothing. Look at Rostin. Look at Rostin. He got some lean. He gained three yards out of that. They're not going to give him his forward progress, though. How can you not give a guy that big his forward progress with that much effort? He takes his forward progress. I'm going to tell you, a guy like that, man, I really would like to just sit down at a Waffle House and just <laughs> chat with him over a stack of pancakes. You know what I'm saying? I believe he's an interesting guy, man. <laughs> you got a lot to talk about in between yeah. bites, too. Uh, oh, man, just some bacon dribbling, juice dribbling down. It's, boy, it'll be nice. Well, Elgin Andrews, number 44, was again the man who met him head on. Andrews has had a pretty good first half. And he's the linebacker, number 44, as again, it looks like Coach Thomas wants to talk to his team. So while he talks to the Braves, we're going to take a quick break. 6.50 left here in the first half. Alcorn State ran a running play while we were away, and a penalty was called, so now we're going to sort this thing out. It was third down, and they didn't pick up nearly enough yards for the first, but we'll wait and see. A penalty declined. Fourth down. Yeah, so they didn't get the they, the penalty was charged to the Braves, so that'll force them to probably punt the football. Jay, right here, the momentum is, is with Alcorn, and uh, they're across the 50 into the uh, the Jaguars territory. What would you do? Would you punt it, or would you would you have a play here to try to keep momentum with you, or would you punt it here? Now, they're playing so good. You got to go for the pooch punt. Put them inside the 10-yard line and make Jackson State drive the length of the field. Because what you alluded to earlier, teams just don't drive 80 yards for touchdowns that often. Right. Chicoria, the fifth-leading punter in the SWAC, looking for the little pooch punt, and boy, he, he, he accomplished it. He accomplished it. It's going to be down inside the two. Am I good or what? <laughs> and you know what? The young guy who covered the, the kick almost then rolled it to the end zone. I may be good, but I'm not as good as that punter. That punter put it right there on the one. If he can do that for the rest of his career, he can make a living. <laughs> now time for our McDonald's trivia question. In its six-year history, the Capital City Classic has drawn over 52,000 folks. What year did they set the attendance record? We'll have the answer when we come back. Tied up at 14 apiece. I don't think we've gotten near that attendance record today, though. Right. But it's raining. First and 10. After a penalty, they lost half a yard. Robert Kent not going to take any chances and try that quarterback sneak and boy look at the braves defensively it seems like that attitude you, you talked about things up. being contagious right. losing you start getting the role is momentum on this side right now is the question yes it is on their side they're excited they're looking at chops and right now they want blood they want a safety you know that's what they're trying to do they don't want to just get a stop here you can tell they're all excited they're trying to bull rush people back into the quarterback and they want that safety which will give them a whole lot of momentum a little bit later on shirts are out Knees are muddy, elbows are bleeding. Second down, handoff to the tailback. McLaurin, McLaurin still on his feet, thrown out of bounds at about the 20, but not before he picked up a good 18 yards on that play. Let's go back to our McDonald's trivia question. Had something to do with attendance in the six-year history of the Capital City Classic. 
which has drawn over 52,000. Which year set the attendance record? Any answers? Answers, yes. Oh, they 1996, put it up too soon. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> 62,000 folks they had in this place. Wow. And that's what black college football is all about, people, especially in the SWAC. They do come out to these games. They do support their teams. First and 10, and McLaurin is... A host of pushed braves. backwards. A host led by number two. First of all, let me just remind folks that our trivia question was brought to you by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. Now you can go into your host. Because I really love to talk too. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that Braves defense just drove the running back back, led by Kenny Washington, number two. He's everywhere. He's a rover type player. He's a linebacker. He's a strong safety. He's just a football player. Yes, he is. Second down now. A little over 10 for first. Catch pass for the second time today. Dropped by Lawrence Story, the leading receiver on this team. The field conditions are getting a little wet. <laughs> the story hasn't changed on him today so far. Field conditions, the balls have been a little wet. They've been out there exposed to that rain for going on a full half now. You know, ball's a little slickery, if I can get away with saying that word here. But he's just got to focus. Story is coming off his best game of the year where he had 10 receptions last week in the win over New Haven. Yeah, but what have you done for me lately? <laughs> Has he been reading the stories lately? <laughs> And we may have an injury. Kevin to uh, Keith that's Thomas. Kevin Thomas, Kevin. the big lineman going off big six. 6'1", 285, senior. He's one of the best linemen. He's, he's hobbled off. He was a first-team all-swack selection last year. Oh! Kent, pop, oh, yeah. duck, Guess who in the did. air. Guess who laid the boom <laughs> once again? Is that Kenny? Is that? Look at Kenny. Yeah, I guess he's raising his hand. Do you have to ask, George. Do you have to ask with a guy like that? Look don't at even ask. He don't have a headband. He have a rag band. Watch, watch the QB neck snap. If he doesn't see this one coming. As a QB, the hit hurts. Watch the bam. Oh, the neck right there. That's bad. That's not pleasant to look, look at. Look at his helmet. Look at Kenny. He's dirty. Spats came off. He got a head rag instead of band around his head. Hey, this guy's exciting to watch. He just plays. He plays football. He plays football. Hey, All out to him. Regardless of the conditions. Regardless so, of the score. And in this case, regardless of the record. <laughs> Reynolds standing at about the 47-yard line of Jackson State. He's going to field it at the 48. Ooh, wipe out got block. Got a block. Got some room. Still on his feet. At the 35. Still on his feet. Looking for some blocks. He's now getting inside the 20-yard line. To the 15 and run out of bounds. At the 18-yard line. 34-yard return for Reynolds. And the all-court state praise with 419 left. Looking for more. The block here back to Jackson, Mississippi. We've got a great setup here as Willie Blair comes out of nowhere and whacks number 39, springing number 81 free for a big, long game. And he continued to keep his feet churning, churning, running, running, running. You see Blair comes back in the picture, plenty of blocking, good pushing on a great return. Unfortunately, block you saw there at the end is going to bring it all back. They called a block in the back. Alcorn's going to get the ball about midfield. Oh, man. 15 yards from the point of the infraction, and that's why it's back at the 50-yard line. Across just by inches is across just by inches. And Renard, I, do I feel a Raston moment here? <laughs> <laughs> well, he gave us a 35-yard touchdown run last time they had the football. He's your up back. And they fake it to oh. him and now commit a big football. Fumble. Picked up by Andrews. Fumble. Andrews fumbles the football. And we got a hot potato down there, but I think Jackson State has it inside Alcorn State's 30-yard line. Poor pitch by the quarterback. He let the running back get too far close, too far ahead of him to the line of scrimmage. That pitch was doomed from the start. Chris Peters was the tailback you're talking about, but I told you Andrew's been all over the place here in the first half. He was the guy that initially picked up the football. See, they're running an option to the weak side to the veer. He gets held up a little bit and hesitates for that half a second. And once the running back sees the quarterback commit to going upfield, he's got to commit to go upfield as well. That way, that forced the pitch to be behind the running back. He didn't have a chance of getting that ball. Joshua Pitch. Matthews is the guy that wind up with it. 6'2", 260 freshman. Uh, this is a nice thing going right here. This is a good game. Costly penalty, though. You really hate Costly, to see that happen. Yes. So now here comes Nathan McLaurin, and McLaurin 
finds no room whatsoever to maneuver as he picks up maybe two yards on the play. And that was Brian Williams, number 78 there to make the tackle. And McLaurin is a young freshman, so he's trying to learn to get them the tough yardage inside. Second down now and 10. So he didn't pick up any yards on that one. As they'll go I formation now. Not doing a whole lot of that wide open stuff on this series, are they? This time. Getting hit. They had to cut out that blitz in a little bit. <laughs> they give it inside to the sophomore Lawrence Nolan. And Nolan picks up maybe three yards on that play. They're really using this two tight end set. That's telling you that they respect the blitzing that Alcorn State was doing earlier. And they just don't want their quarterback getting hit that often. But I also think at the same time, they were having some success. They scored 14 quick points before they got away from their game plan. But, the, but it was a battle of wheels. Will you stop Kenny Washington from getting <laughs> your quarterback? <laughs> so it came down to a battle of wheels. Under three minutes left here. Here in the first half, and it's 14-14. Jackson State has the football now a timeout on the field as Robert Hughes wants to talk to his offensive unit. Well, Coach Thomas, he's done a super job up to this point of keeping his troops in the game, keeping their head focused and their mind head and mind focused on the game. Let's take a look at our take charge play of the game brought to you by AutoZone and who do you think it's going to feature? How about Big Rasson <laughs> in unison? Taking charge. Taking charge and running over and taking prisoners with him. As he goes in from 35 yards out, that's our take charge play of the game brought to you by AutoZone. The more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. So 2.54 left here in the first half. And early on, it looked like Jackson State was going to have an easy time with it. They were throwing the football. Alcorn State was taking a lot of chances with the blitz. It was 14-0. But slowly but surely, the Braves had gotten back in this thing. They're back in the shotgun, so you know that may be a chance to go again. Third down and six. Kent over the middle. Ken had a wide open receiver, and once again, it's his tight end, Travis. The tight hand ends have been open. And considering the fact that they'll come into the ball game with six, seven wide receivers, <laughs> that's interesting. That's, that's showing you that Robert Kent's doing a good job of taking his best matchup, going for his best chance of success. The tight ends haven't been the story all year long. We talked about Mr. Story and Daniel Guy, as well as T.C. Taylor. Tight end's been overlooked. Freshman showing some poise, going to the tight end, taking the open receiver. And now they go double tight end set. I formation and Kent gonna hold on to the football and gonna pick up maybe two yards on the play. Clock's still rolling, folks, as we are now under two and a half minutes left here. And I think in the Kent, first half. I think Kent better learn how to get out because his head and upper body was hanging there. Exposed. <laughs> and at any moment number two would come lurking <laughs> and head out to see what you gonna do. And don't forget about Mr. Clark. He he will come up and expose you for what you know for the young man that he wants to be. And again, another timeout on the field. And Jackson State calls another timeout. So with 2.10 left, they're going to discuss things. And let's go on down to the field where Joe Claire continues to work up and down the sideline. Check this out. Check this out. Now, Jackson State, they over here talking a lot of stuff. They feel that Alcorn don't even supposed to be in the game with them. That's what they've been over here saying. Me, I think that the rain has definitely been an extra player for Alcorn. You know what I'm saying? The rain is they ever play. It's been making them play the way they've been playing. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm be down here. I'm going to see if we get some personal beefs, and I'm going to tell them to y'all, and we'll be back in a minute because okay. it's cold and raining. Okay. Good looking, but he's absolutely right. Jackson State had to come into this football game feeling that there's no way that the Braves are going to be able to play with us. And yet, Alcorn State has given them everything they can handle. Played good defense. Kenny Washington, Howard Clark, and on the offense, as long as they keep the ball on the ground right. and patient, they'll be all right. There you go. Well, I tell you, you're getting good as a play-by-play <laughs> play play and a color guy. <laughs> <laughs> Why are y'all here? Anyway, second down and another one-yard pickup. 
Well, you're here to collect that check, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> We're not going to get into finances. Because <laughs> BET is, uh, will pay. <laughs> yes, they will. And one of the things that Coach Thomas talked about earlier, he said, even though we're 0 10, I asked the coach, I said, are you having a hard time motivating your kids to play in the football games? He said, no, we're not, because we're in the game every week. And he said, a game like this, if I have to motivate them to play at home in front of this crowd here in Jackson, Mississippi, against a rival, then maybe I recruited the wrong kind of kid. Well, in the last game, they took on Alabama A&M, a club with a chance right. to go to the SWAC championship game in a couple of weeks, and they lost 27 to 20. But they ran for 179 yards against that Alabama A&M defense Whoa. that we know right. can play some D defense. and is the number one rushing defense in the SWAC. So Alcorn State has shown the ability to do some things against some good football clubs, like you said. They're young, and what you need to do is get some consistency. And remember, hold on to them high points and let a little bit of them low points go so you can build up some consistency to be a better team overall. And one of the things you can add, you know, it's, it's just a matter of time before they're going to start throwing the football a whole lot better because you're not going to be the alma mater of a one Steve Aaron McNair yeah. oh. and not recruit a quarterback or two that's going to straight out throw it. So, Steve, if you're listening, <laughs> are you looking? We're, hey, we're asking you to come back and help us <laughs> recruit at Alcorn State. So here we go, third down and goal. Kent going to throw the other way. Wide open receiver. Touchdown, Tory Fitpin. Wide open. They did a great job of disguising this. All out, roll out to the right. Throw the ball back to your left. This time by design. Early he tried to do it, kind of improvising. And there's a touchdown in the celebration. And that's what it's all about. Tory Fitpin was wide open on this play. To start off on the right as a running back, the lead blocker, he's going to kind of get caught up in the wash. Act like he's blocking. Nobody's account for him. Oh, I sneak by you. A little bit of trickery going on here. Great call by the Jackson State offensive coordinator. Big Pin's third touchdown reception of the season. And he came into the game the fourth leading receiver on this team. And then Brian Reynolds is about as sure as Mr. Automatic as you can have on the extra point. And this kick is up and Automatic. it's good. And, you know, it's interesting about Brian Reynolds. The last time we did Jackson State, Brian Reynolds was thinking about quitting this football team. He had just come from playing Howard University, had missed three field goals, and started to doubt himself. Robert Hughes, his head coach, pulled him aside. He said, listen, son, you're my kicker. You're going to have to shake out of this thing. He comes back against Tennessee State, kicks the game-winning field goal from 33 yards out, and since then, he has, again, as you said, been on the mark. Yep. And that's just an example of a coach sticking with a young man, making him feel positive about himself, and it's paid off for Jackson State. And the coach has plenty of confidence in him. I saw him kicking before the game, and he said, anything from 46 yards in, I'm not even worried about it. So that goes to show you that he has a lot of confidence. Plus, he's won another football game outside of just that one game against Tennessee State with the last second field goal. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to let you two talk about kickers because I don't get involved in this guy. <laughs> they have a different mental psyche plan. We practice hard all week, get prepared. They sit up and drink coffee, tell me, ooh, it's too cold. And then we got to depend on these guys to win sure the game. Sure do have so, to depend on them. So they bring you your money. Right, they so bring you your money. So y'all pump them up, and I'll just sit here and listen. <laughs> Nate's, Nate's not from the old school, yeah. old, old school, when right. the, all the kickers in the NFL used to be offensive linemen. Thank you. When they used to just muscle the ball over. You're not from that, huh? You're yeah. new jack old linemen, huh? That's right. <laughs> so That's minute right. 49 is left here in the first half. If Alcorn State can get the football, and let's say they don't get great field position, can they throw this football downfield and try to get some points on the board? Have they shown the ability to do it? Let's stay smart. Let's don't, let's don't get out of hand here. Reynolds takes it at the 15-yard line. Wedge. Reynolds got some room. Reynolds making a move, and Reynolds gets it out to the 40. 5-yard line, a 30-yard return for Renard Reynolds. So now they do have good field position. A minute 38 left, and what do you do? Do you still put the ball in your running back's hands? I think you run a, you try and run a screen or something like that. Because, I mean, obviously we know you're not throwing the ball that efficient. And the only pass route you've done with some success has been a deep fade route. And Jackson State's not going to give you the fade route right now. Just get a completion, get the drive going. Once you get the drive going, then you can get some momentum built from there. Right. And if I'm going to throw the ball, it's going to be off some type of play-action pass when you think. Yeah. Yeah, they got Big Roston down here in yes. the slot. <laughs> <laughs> Roston in motion. Fair. 
Looking for a hole. May have committed too soon, oh. but gets to the outside. One defender slipped. He spins and gets about a yard shy of midfield. But it looked like he committed to the run just too soon on that play. I think it was a design for him to run. Because he, he just dropped right back and went straight up. He didn't look around and read. Right here, he drops straight back. He don't even look around. He looks for a hole to run in. He goes in and he gives us a ghost leg and comes back out and makes some plenty of moves to get a about three, four yards. It was exciting three or four yards I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six. As Raston goes in motion. Fair. Quickly looking for his receiver who was wide open and Reynolds could not hold on to the football. Well, now you see why he's the return, why he's number six in returns in this swag and not reception. Good football player here. But, you know, we will have a little sympathy for him. He's got the gloves on. A lot of people don't know gloves are pretty bad in the rain. You know, they, they, had a, they had a tendency to get real slippery and a lot of balls. I've seen a lot of interceptions happen because people wearing gloves. That's spoken truly from a quarterback that won every pass call. <laughs> <laughs> Third down now, situation for. I think you run the ball, the here, run out the clock, take your lead in, uh, take your seven point deficit in at halftime. I wouldn't recommend passing the ball. They're going to run the option. Yeah. Fair is met unfairly by Edward Reese. Reese, a three-time SWAC player of the week in, at the linebacker spot, number 56. Six feet, 240, senior, playing his, possibly his last game. He's excited. He's trying to make plays. Right here, they run the option. They come down and hand it to Big. They fake it off to the fullback. He keeps it. Fair keeps it. But the linebacker's right on top of him. And they'll let that clock run out like Jay indicated. If they have to punt the football, so be it. But they want to make sure that Jackson State doesn't have a chance to do anything else and take anything more than a seven-point lead into intermission. And the bands are starting to line up on the outside of the field. Four seconds, so they'll take the penalty, the delay a game. And then probably kick the ball directly out of bounds. Offense, five yards, it remains fourth down. Now all you need is three seconds worth of hang time, right? And, you know, <laughs> you know and and speaking of penalties, this is the first smart penalty <laughs> we've had all day. <laughs> I tell you, it's cold, it's windy, it's wet. We're outside. And it's football, baby. It's football at its finest. So Chicoria will punt the football. And Thick Pen is going to let this one bounce. And he's going to get a pretty good stat out of that one. Yes, he is. <laughs> and it's going to bounce inside the 15 yard line. And look at Ben. The Ben, I'm almost man, feeling like man, I'm not standing. I'm not standing. Look, look at him. 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 Look at him.
halftime score, Jackson State leads by seven. Let's go back down on the field for more of the band. commercial break when we come back we're ready to start the second half today's halftime report has been brought to you by southwest airlines for second half action between jackson state and alcorn state by the way this week's random drawing winner of the pizza hut party prize is kim watson of oak grove kentucky congratulations to your first half stats and go ahead jay analyze well the key thing here is jackson state has 140 yards if I'm correct, they probably got 130 of that in the first quarter of the game. They got away from their game plan after they got blitzed, and then they started running the football a little bit more. Alcorn, on the other half, that 79 yards rushing is impressive. They need a little bit more, though, because it took them a long time to establish their running game. As Big Nate said, it took them a while to start leaning on people. Well, yeah, the big difference here is your penalties. Alcorn, Alcorn State has to start with a penalty, 11 for 108. Jackson State only has 3 for 20. The, the time of possession is not that big a factor right now. 
Although if Alcorn can get it leaning their way, they can get back into this game. They're only down seven points here. So they can continue to run the ball with Quentin Ralston and Fair, the option quarterback, and make things happen. Time of possession in favor. She's football working hard for State. the money, boy. You work hard for the money. Now you see what it's like. Football's not all glamour all the time. <laughs> no, it is not. Today's halftime report has been Walker and Nate Newton and Joe Claire's on the field. And we're about ready for 30 more minutes of football. Well, we got to change that up now. Officially, for the record, it's never Nate Newton. It's Big Nate Newton. It's Big Nate Newton. Big okay. Nate Newton with the bling bling rings from the Dallas Cowboys. How many rings you got, Nate? I don't know, man. Look at what you got to get with. Uh, you got to get with all corn, man. How they be coming out dancing? They pump, man. I got three Super Bowl rings. Thank you. I, yeah, don't we, know, but I was I gonna say, I know Bowl. you know how many rings you got. <laughs> Here we go. Second half action about to start. Big pin. and Jackson State. With the return, and they get the football, and that was Tory Thigpen, Thigpen taking it out to about the 23-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for JSU. JSU. I remember back in my days, like I could never beat Jackson State when I was at Florida a and &M. Jay, did you ever do it as a 1994 Player of the Year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I beat, I beat Alcorn. You we beat Alcorn. Howard okay. University beat Alcorn. Oh, yeah, that. Thanks to Tony Hyman. Tony Hyman. <laughs> Thanks to Tony Hyman. I'll never forget that ball game. You guys took the big lead on uh, Eric McNair, then you went down with an injury, and. Steve started bringing that club back. But let's get into this ball game where Jackson State has a seven-point lead in the football as we start the second half and immediately keeping it on the ground to Damian Ducksworth, who carries it for about a yard. That lets me know they haven't made any halftime adjustments on how to figure out that blitz. If they're running right. the football, we know they don't want to do it. So they're still keeping an extra tight end there for protection. As we see, we've got an injury on the Jackson State offensive line. They've got, they're still trying to figure out a way to help out their blocking scheme so they can help protect their quarterback. And until they do that, they're going to be in trouble. As Gary Akins has got a little bad wheel, looks like. The way he's holding it up, that looks like an ankle problem, huh, Nate? Oh, yes. Uh, it's getting cold. They, the, the pain is setting in. Everybody's wet. You know, normally on a, on a slippery field, though, it's kind of hard to twist an ankle because the ground will give a little bit and you'll slide before then. So that may be a point of concern. It's kind of hard to dig yeah, in on a wet turf. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know, when you're big and trying to change directions and you're grunting and you're moaning, you can get a little more uh, traction than a receiver can who's light. This guy here is six foot, 310 pound junior, outstanding guy. Uh, <laughs> And it's interesting, Akins, when you look at their depth chart, doesn't have anyone listed really behind him. He comes down, look at, comes down on his heel, right there. They roll on his heel. So it has nothing to do with traction. He's sustaining his block there, and for a pretty good block, and the defensive player and the running back rolls into his ankle there. So what they've done is they've moved Chris Hammond, the starting guard, into the center position. And we'll get that other guard in a second. Here we go, and Kenny Washington, who had a tremendous first half, comes up with a sack in the second play of the second half. As you can see, he's tried to get himself back together. He's got his spat back on, and, but now he's got stuff hanging off his pants. So here we are right here. He comes from the outside, beats the running back. Number 42, Duckworth, if I'm not wrong there, uh, and just gets the quarterback. That's a poor job of blocking there. It Very seems like Kenny job. Washington just wants to get to the football more than everybody else. Taylor in the first half was, oh, excuse me, Trent that is. Robert Trent was 10 of 24 for 138 yards and three touchdowns. Third down now, make it 16. And Kent completes his pass to Lawrence Story. Story's going to be about a yard short of a first down, but for Story, his first reception of the ball game. So what you're saying, the story has changed. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Get a chance to look at Big Story here. Big guy, look at a long stride. Gets the DB to commit to the deep ball. Sits outside, ball stone right between the one and the three. Good little catch just to get him going. Get your big play receiving through the football game. And did Cremio respect that speed or what? Because, I mean, it looked like he played him about seven, eight yards off the line of scrimmage. This is a horseshoe field. He was out the other end of the horseshoe. <laughs> Fourth down and one. They're going to go for it. All Look at and, and, and the Braves jumping. They're ready to go. Everybody's resetting and relaxing. He's checking off. He sees something. Too much time. And Lawrence Nolan was your single setback. He came up 
and told Kent, you're going to have to do something. He does, calls a timeout. With this program for 26 years, he was the interim head coach last year after doing a fine job with this team, getting them in the SWAC championship game. They gave him the title as head coach, and he really has earned it with this team. It's very rare you find men that stay loyal to a program as long as Robert Hughes has been. First and 10 for his Tigers, and a little out pattern for T.C. Taylor, and Taylor TC's can't hold on to it. T.C., come on. Let's go on down to the field and Joe Claire. All right, y'all, in case y'all ain't know, I'm down here doing the awkward boogie like I'm George Clinton. <laughs> Man, it's wonderful. I'm like a little kid. I'm having a good time. I'm like one of them rainy day kids. A lot of people left, though, after the bangs. I know how black people are. A lot of people left. <laughs> but for you at home, you're going to see a wonderful game, so don't you go nowhere. Joe Claire and, and George and Nate. And Nate talking about he ain't cold or whatever. Nate. You ain't cold, it's warm, you got cookies and stuff upstairs, man. Stop acting like that. Back to y'all, man. Joe, I want to see you do a belly flop. You let one of them rain, kids. Start oh. playing in the mud. <laughs> On second down and ten, pass is incomplete. As Kent was pressured by Edwin Norwood. Had to get rid of the football and had too much steam on it. Big Ed Norwood, 6'4", 253, DN. Came there and loaded the boom. On Robert Kent there, kind of letting them know, okay, you guys are getting away from uh, running the ball. You're going to pass it again, you're going to pay your dues. Big third and ten coming up here, because one of these teams needs to get a, a big play to get some momentum going. In Norwood, who has five sacks coming into the football game, second most on the club, looking to give some pressure. This time, Kent with some time, but got hit from behind, and yes, that altered the pass. Don't tell him it's that same number two again. Well, you don't want us to tell you. <laughs> so we won't say anything. And it wasn't him. <laughs> it was him. He is following the football, boy. I mean, that time they're only rushing three or four guys, so they got some confusion amongst the Jackson State offense now. They really don't know what to do. Alcorn came out and was rushing eight or nine at a time. Now they're only rushing three or four and getting sacked. Yeah. And when you see a guy like Kent Washington, them, them are the guys that make it to the, to the next level as special team players, and they can play a lot of years because there's always a place out there for a guy that knows how to get to the football, a nose for the football. Here goes Reynolds. Reynolds takes it at about the 22-yard line, still on his feet. Look at that. Oh, Reynolds flag. has some room, and he drops the football after being tackled. I got it back, and we got a flag back at and the 27-yard line. I think it, the, the call was not... It was a bad call, I think. I'm not sure. Coach Thomas told me yesterday, he said, on special teams, we've been making mistakes. We've had kicks where we get great field position, and we commit penalties, miscues, and have to bring it back. And we've seen that now twice in this football game. Yes, we have. Renard Reynolds is a heck of a return, man. He's broken two or three of them for big games, and he could have changed the momentum of this one. Yeah. But all these blocks in the backs keep, keep hurting the team. Let's go to commercial break. 9.22 left here in the third quarter. Jackson State has a seven-point lead. We'll see where Alcorn State starts when we get back. See it at home? These officials, they all over the place. They calling numbers on, they calling players numbers that ain't even on the field. They calling uh, charges against players, don't even have numbers. They don't know what's going on over here, man. I, that's what's messing the game up. It's the officials. Y'all watch the officials. I'll be watching the officials. Watch them. Watch, watch what they do next. Watch them. Now he sounds like a player, y'all. Right, right. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a crying Jay Walker to me. Oh, 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 oh. That was a low blow there. <laughs> It ain't that funny, Joe. I see Dunley cracking up on the field. <laughs> Be quiet before I tell that referee what you said about him. So first and 10 for Alcorn State. After the penalty, they are now inside the 20-yard line at the 17. Here's Peters. Peters with some room. And Peters, close to a 10-yard run right there. Reese, the linebacker, one of the guys there to make the play. Also Bryant. Did you see that quick burst he had? That was real nice. You like that? Do you like that? Oh, man, I Big like Nate that. Nate feels at home. That looked like oh, hog slot. Hey, that's you what you got to do. 
<laughs> that's, what, that's why they have stopped Grambling quarterback from throwing because that slop out there on the field, slowing down his footwork and, and, and messing up his release. <laughs> You're leaving yourself open. They stopped that's the right. Grambling quarterback from throwing because he's not playing in this game. <laughs> <laughs> they stopped the Jackson State quarterback. Oh, that's look, excuse look, look, at that Jackson State. look at that pick. Where would we be without our teacher up here, Nate? Where would oh, we yeah, be? That's why you need a quarterback. That's why you need a quarterback. <laughs> Second down and one. Deep back. Right. And Yancey is going to pick up the first down. And Vince, Vince Davis was the man who came up and met him, number six. Yancey right with some good hard running. Just needed a yard and a half. Got his yard and a half. Kept churning his feet so he wouldn't go down in that big slop of mud we saw down there. <laughs> so he went to the with James Bolden and all of those guys, they don't mind getting sloppy about it and making things happen and pushing them guys off the ball. Remember in the first half, Alcorn State was able to put together a nice long drive, take the football down the field, take a lot of time off the clock. And maybe they can do that again, although they're rushing to the line of scrimmage like they know they need to get this playoff. Here's Fair, going to throw the football. And the pass was out of reach for his intended receiver. Pass was intended for Ronald Gilmore. Second down and a lot to go. We have to do something to pick up the momentum for this all corn offense. You got to make a play. Because with Jackson State having that great quarterback on the other side, anything can happen at any moment. Jay, are you humming? Oh, <laughs> too <laughs> good. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to football. Keep your mind on the game. Thank you. Second down and 10. Peters to the outside. Got one man to beat in Davis. Davis going to wrestle him down. Good straight arm. Deliver a little blow there to the back. They pull big uh, William Smith, number 73. He pulls out. Tries to secure a block. Right here you see Williams pull out. Gets a block. Springs him free. It's just a foot race from there. And right then, uh, right there, the running back lost. And you see what they were able to do there was get Ed Reese to make a tackle outside in between the two tight ends. We said he plays pretty good from tackle to tackle. Get him on the perimeter. Speed is not his forte. You just get a sprint. Got beat to the corner on the sprint. Well, Reese is their leading tackler, but that guy right there, Vince Davis, doesn't do too bad. He's the third leading tackler on this football team from his safety position. Third down now in the seven. Fair time. Fair one to run. And now he's in trouble, but he gets out of it. Still on his feet. Fair across the 45 and inside Tiger territory with a nice run. That's called utilizing what you have. If you're not having a great day throwing the football, and you just don't throw that football that good on the year, hey, let me beat you with my feet. You know, you want to cover all my wide receivers and make it tough for me to pass. I'll drop back here. I'll read the first guy. I'll step up. Oop. Miss me, I'll give him a little cut, a little shake here, kind of air McNair or something like that. Run with the ball to the outside and then protect the football when you realize you're going to get hit. And notice on that play, Terrence Johnson, the big tackle, stayed with his man and sprung him for that long run there. That's what you're talking about. Keep hustling. These young guys have been struggling all year, but today they have come to play. That offensive line of all corn has come to play. They've been playing together. They've been staying. The children of the corn is finally coming together to Rick Havitt. Sir Haver Fair with a 19-yard pickup on that play. First down at the 49-yard line of Jackson State. Kenny Bryant, the cornerback for JSU, was shaken up and left the ball game as Mario Mouton comes in to replace him. Clock continues to roll. Under 640 left here in the third quarter. And now a little pro set look behind Fair. Good pressure, but he eludes it to the outside. Done a good job the past couple of plays getting away from the pressure, but because of it, he loses three yards on that one. Got to get rid of the football. And they hate to say you're already a senior. If you don't know it by now, you're probably not going to know it. But that's when you just got to get rid of the football. You cost yourself three yards you didn't need to cross. You are being very critical, Jay Walker. I like that. <laughs> 1994 Offensive Player of the Year. I give coaching criticism. I give it's positive criticism. Okay. <laughs> You're critiquing them in a positive way. Okay. Actually, a loss of two for Fair, so it's now second down and 12. As you see, Robert Hughes, his defense this year has allowed teams to run for 169 yards a game, and he's not happy with that. 
as Reynolds goes in motion. Here's Peters trying to cut inside and slipped a little bit and tripping him up with Zach Grady, the linebacker, number 54. Back to the original line of scrimmage, at least. Yeah. And you talk about Robert Hughes not being, Coach Hughes actually not being that pleased with his defense. He's got a good reason to be. For many, many years, the Jackson State defense was the most feared defense in the, in the SWAC. I mean, everybody was scared of them. You had names like Marlo Perry, Fernando Smith, uh, DBs getting drafted left and right. And all of a sudden, you have a defense that ranks second to last in the SWAC in defense. So he realized he's got to do some improvement there to right. get it back to that Jackson State tradition. And the old name that you young guys wouldn't know is Robert Brazil. Robert Brazil. He's going to play for the Houston Oilers. Absolutely. One of the great linebackers coming from black college football. Fair on third down has done a good job eluding the pressure and looking over the middle and don't know if it was intended for his tight end Marcus Holbert or the wide receiver Reynolds. They both were in the area at the same time. Right here he drops back. If he gets his first read, gets a little pressure, get undecided, like he can run right here with open field, and he stops. He sees the big tight end, Hobart, here. Overthrows him. But you know, Hobart is a guy that was uh, all-conference, all-America last year. Picked the uh, number four tight end by uh, Streets and Smith. Division one double A. And so, I mean, this guy here, he's, he's virtually has disappeared from the offense. He has not caught a ball all game long, and they need to go to Marcus Holbert. They want a, a big play receiving-wise. He can provide it. But on fourth down, Chicoria will punt the football. And again, another good punt. This one is going to stop at the six-yard line. And Ed Chicoria has done a good job keeping Jackson State pinned. 42-yard punt. They're at the six. We're back with more. But this is the all cheerleading squad. They did not now the Jackson State cheerleaders. They gone. They stay. Why y'all stay? See, that's that. That's that. That's that thing. They going I think they gonna be triumphant today. Back up to y'all up top because of the chili gonna win. Back to y'all up top. Joe Clair got to tell you, he's a comedian, he's a psychic, he's picking predictions. Yeah, I need to get some of them dudes with the chili and get some more women around. <laughs> he, he's a critic of the officials. He's been doing it all today. So here we go, single setback behind Kent. This time, they give it to the big fullback for Jackson State. That's Lawrence Nolan, and Nolan picks up good yards on that carry. Good enough for a first down, and he's out at about the 20-yard line. They're going to mark it a yard shy at the 19. 6'2", 230, sophomore, so we'll be seeing a lot more of him in the future. But it's interesting, we haven't seen a lot of Damian Ducksworth, and we talk about the fact that this is the last regular season game for both teams, and Ducksworth is one of the top rushers in the SWAC, and we haven't seen him at all, number 42. Here's Kent on first down to Daniel Guy. Guy makes the catch at about the 26-yard line. It'll be second down. And let's talk about Daniel Guy also. Right. Another player that they're saying is a pro prospect and wide receiver following in the footsteps of some of the great receivers that have played here at Jackson State. Last year we had Sylvester Morris. And, I mean, the list just goes on and on of the great receivers. Wayne 22 Burkett. receivers yeah. have left Jackson State and gone on to the National Football League. Including Jimmy Smith, too. Can't forget about Jimmy at all. Yes, uh, he, he stepped through <laughs> Dallas for a minute <laughs> and moved on, and now he's a great long ball threat for the Jaguars of Jacksonville. And, and to get back to Daniel Guy, I mean, he's having a pretty good year. Story has stepped up big time for him. Jackson State definitely has the recipe for getting NFL receivers if all you young guys out there are thinking about going to a school down in the South. Jackson State does have a recipe for you. He's 6'2", 195 pounds. On the other side of him, they got another wide receiver that's 6'5", 205 in Story and T.C. Taylor. And they got a good young quarterback that's going to be around for a long time. Many touchdown passes to come. And don't sleep on the fact that they also have a young man they're grooming by the name of Tim Manning, number five, that they believe is going to be the next great receiver here. He's just a freshman. He's from Jackson. So, five yards. So you, 
Is he through? Is the official out there through? Or I think he's done this. Does he want to take all our time up here at BET? <laughs> <laughs> he's not trying to hone in on your stuff. I know. I don't need him to at this time. because But y'all mentioned all these great wide receivers here. I think Jackie Slater comes from Jackson State. A great uh, NFL lineman. Played 20 years with the Rams. 342 and counting in the third quarter. Still a seven-point lead. No scoring here in the second half so far as Jackson State again with the inside handoff to Nolan. So they're trying to pound out a little clock themselves. They're trying to take the more minimal wave from Alcorn State and wear down their defense, which is last year was very young, all sophomores. This year now basically juniors moving into uh, one more year of maturity. And that's what Coach Thomas told us. He said, listen, I'm going to build my trenches first. I'm going to get that young defensive line, that young offensive line. Once they start to mature, we can do anything we want to do. And here's Kent with the carry. Oh. And he took a shot late. It looked like one. Over on the sideline. Did he get rolled up on get up from yeah, there? Yeah, it looked like it. He ran it out to midfield at the 50-yard line, and he took a shot. Somebody need to alert these refs. This is not the XFL. <laughs> 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 these guys need their quarterbacks. Look right here. He's out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. Number 36 there came up and put his shoulder on him. He's a tough kid, 6'5", 205. He's got a nice frame, nice size. He'll probably graduate about 220 pounds, solid 220. He's got the build. 14-yard pickup for Kent. First and 10 balls at midfield. And movement again, and Kent goes to the knee, says, don't touch me. I mean, at a certain point, though, you, you kind of want your center to say, let's play football. Let the official determine if these guys are offsides or not. Offside. But, you know, it is a smart play. That's one thing about it. remains first down. That's one thing about the offsides. It gets you a free five, so now you come either second and five or third and five, depending on when you jump. It, it, it's a more manageable situation for a coach to But then to you take away the bomb. You know, you get him offside, you snap the ball, let your quarterback get it on a regular cadence, and he goes for the deep shot. And you get a free play. Here's Nolan fighting through one tackler and dragging another one close to yet another first down. Good hard running. And anytime you talk about hard run, I think we all would be a little upset if we didn't mention the fact that this is the school, the original hard oh, running in the yeah. NFL, Walter Payton. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. Not too many people did it as good and as long as he did for the time that he did. And he's truly missed in all accolades. I think his brother's with us today, Eddie. Eddie stopped, passed by. He's one of the great alumni. And he passed by earlier. Eddie's actually the golf coach. Yes? Yes, he is. So Jackson State and has really got, done a good job of bringing golf to African Americans, especially at the collegiate level. So you're saying Tiger Woods stopped here before he went on to Stanford? Actually, we did a golf tournament one time in Ohio that Eddie had brought his team up to, and Tiger Woods was a 16-year-old young man who came to the tournament and gave a uh, an exhibition. So, yes, they have crossed paths in the past. There you go. That's George. Keeper of the archives. <laughs> and First a great historian. And Ball at the 37 yard line. Kent's looking downfield for Story, who's got the height oh. advantage. Makes a one handed catch despite the defensive efforts of Terrence Tremiel. The one thing you can't teach a wide receiver is size. You either got it or you don't. And you see here, it's just a, a, a matchup problem right here. Story is six foot five. He's got good speed. He can go up and just out jump that guy and put that big body in his way to the football. So the only way the defender can get the football is to go through him. We just don't go through a big six five target like that. Gentlemen, a one handed catch. He didn't catch that. A one handed snap. He screamed. Something you can only dream. Something you can only dream of, George. You're talking about his side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. First and ten. Okay, 25 yard pickup for Lawrence Story. And a fumble on the snap. And so Kent had to eat it, and yet still picked up about two yards on the play. Kent comes up with the no huddle, calling this play. I'd like to see him do a nice little draw play here. I wouldn't be surprised if they popped the draw on real quick for a touchdown. Know, or for a successful know. game, Kent discount the Alcorn State defense like that. So a fade here or something like that, or they're taking away the quick slant as you see, but a, a fade one-on-one -on -one to the outside or posting corner wouldn't be at the bottom of your <laughs> screen here. Or a penalty. 
<laughs> which is the last thing that you wanted. I tell you what, boy, your jokes are getting better though, Jay. <laughs> You're rubbing off on me. You're good at stating the obvious. Well, it seemed like Ken had enough time when he came to the line of scrimmage to get the play off. And was it something defensively that the Braves were showing him that he wasn't quite sure about? It looks like he tried to go to an audible. They loaded the box with a number count to give him a numbers disadvantage. And he tried to make an audible with five seconds on the clock, and he just don't have the time. As a quarterback, rule of thumb is it normally takes you at least seven seconds to get an audible off. So here we go, second down and 12 after the penalty. Shotgun formation, snap wasn't good, but Ken has it. Clark forcing him to go the other way, and he throws a wounded duck out of bounds. And so that'll make it now third down. We go to commercial break. We'll be right back. As they are now inside the 15-yard line, line, the ball is marked at about the 12. Boy, the colder and colder it gets, the heavier and heavier my tongue starts to feel. I mean, it is getting cold out here, y'all. I mean, the rain is pouring, and I know I'm sitting here complaining. They're out there on the field trying to do some stuff. Thank you, <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> and they give him a first down under this situation and Ken on first down looking into the end zone and Daniel Guy makes the catch. Touchdown Daniel Guy from 12 yards out and he had two defenders all over him and still made the catch. I heard a great quarterback once say when I see one of my receivers with two people on him sometime I still throw him the ball. And that was Terry Bradshaw that said that. So before you said that was a bad throw, <laughs> touchdown right there. So every now and then, you know, part of the football game is 5% luck, too. That's luck. <laughs> so what you said, affect the outcome all people well. to Moss is luck. Moss is a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> Moss is a little bit different. <laughs> he's, purely got, he's purely got an advantage on everybody. But that was a great catch by a Daniel guy. We talked about the fact that we didn't. We got a busted play here. This could get ugly. And Tim Manning was unable to get the ball down for Reynolds to kick the point after and had to eat it and so now instead of being up 14 they're up 13 points keep in mind Daniel Guy though making this catch with two freshmen right defenders here all over right him. here he drops back takes his time guys run a post and corner comes up big he wrestles the ball away touchdown he took it from him they had great position on him the ball, that's what I mean by the ball shouldn't have possibly been thrown that right, way. Right. But in that case, like you said, Big Nate, though, hey, one on two, I can still throw the ball to him, make a play. And that's why, and that's exactly why Daniel Guy, his coach's field, is a good enough player where he can get a good shot in the NFL and stick on somebody's roster. That was Tyrone Parsons and Tim Batts that were there with the coverage but unable to make the stop. Guy who last week provided the game winner against New Haven with an 11 yard touchdown reception. Catches yet another touchdown on the season. And for him, that's his 10th touchdown reception of the year. So Daniel Guy's touchdown catch puts the Tigers up 27 to 14 with four seconds left here in the third quarter. And the Braves will probably get just enough time here in the third to return this kickoff. There goes Reynolds Here again. Comes Reynolds with another hole. And Reynolds has had at least three or four of these kind of returns. This time, though, we don't see any flags on the field. That's a good thing as we come to the end of our third quarter. So Alcorn State will have the football in Jackson State territory, but trailing by 13. Welcome back. We're Alcorn State trailing 27 to 14. They do have 14 points, and seven of them coming on our connection play of the game, our 1-800-collect play of the game. And that was a touchdown pass from Sir Haver Fair to Ronald Gilmore for 35 yards. And that's our 1-800-collect connection play of the game, which has been brought to you by 1-800-collect, the easy way to save. And I'm sure the Braves would like to see that, not once, but two more times. And here's Fair looking to throw the football. This time he tries to pitch it to an offensive lineman. And the lineman said, no, no, it's too hot. I don't want to get hit out here. <laughs> He's trying to be like, uh, 
Brett Favre, that boy, and he said, no, I don't want it. <laughs> Check this out. He drops back. He looks for a read. He can't find it. He scrambles, try to get away. He <laughs> the line was, big, big Nate, you would have caught that. Oh, I went huh? to the house. <laughs> straight to the house. Penalty or not, Big Nate was going to the house. That was the freshman, Jason Lewis, who didn't want to touch it from Houston, Texas. Good coaching, good coaching. So here we go, second down and ten. Good field position, though, for the Braves. As this time they give it to Rustin. Give it to him four or five times in a row. That's what, you know, That's what I'm waiting to see him do. And they had the momentum. Uh, the, the young offensive line started feeling good about themselves. It, right here, right off the right side. Just let them lean on folks. Just big Terrence hard. Johnson and William Smith, and he's just getting up feeling. I, I don't know why they won't go more to the young guy like that, Big Raston. Raston, that is, excuse me. He picked up seven yards on that play, so now it's third down and three. I formation with right. Raston is your up back. They hand it to Raston, and this time, nothing doing. As right the Tigers right knew it was coming. And don't, and don't give it to him so much moving him side to side. You know, the conditions aren't allowing him to move right. side to side. Give it to him straight up the middle. Go just lean right on your center and your guard. The tackle should have nothing to do with his running style today. Josh Matthews was the guy who was there to make the initial hit. So now it's fourth down, and he may have lost half a yard. Right, they bring, they bring little Peters in a little speed back. See what he's going to do with it, I guess. I mean, it, uh, he's just bringing in a play. Big so, fourth down here. Crucial. Two receivers split to the left. Raston. There you go. First down run. <laughs> and what we say again, what's three times four? Uh -huh. First down, three times four equals the first down. Let him lean on people a little bit. He's got a good style of run. It's kind of similar to Ironhead Haywood when he was in his heyday. He's got a big hole opened up to him by his guard and tackle. Look at big that. guys up front. They're moving up front. Now big Yancey, yeah, the, 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 the big that number six? No, that's uh, Marcus Hobart made a nice block. The tight end, the, the All-American that should be getting a little, uh, seeing more of the ball, but right now he's proving that he can block. He's not one-dimensional. Let's we'll see if they stick with it and keep running him right up the middle, right up the gut. Well, they won't run it this time on first and ten. Fair has all kind of room in front of him, but he's going to throw the football, and Gilmore could not hold on to it. It was in his hands. Right there is where a quarterback loses confidence when he waits and has a chance to run but decides to throw it to his receiver, and the receiver drops it. They usually uh, lose a little confidence, and maybe I'm stepping out of bounds, and we can get something from Jay Walker here on that subject. You said it all right there. Now, I'm not going to help you out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, I want you to know, if I'm wrong here, being you being the expert quarterback, anal uh, bringing us analogy on that. So, I mean, hey, I'm going to give you a chance. If I start talking, I might not stop. <laughs> First, uh, actually second down and 10, I formation, right your deep back. Raston inside, runs right into the linebacker Elgin Andrews again. Rostin is working hard right there for the Alcorn State team. He's just leaning on them. Offensive line up front is just chugging away. But you kind of offset that because they went for a pass on first down. So now you're running on second and ten. And even if you get four yards, you still pretty much have to commit to throwing the football on yes, third do. down. Yes, you do. Watch, watch them go for the fade route here. They got some success earlier with Gilmore catching the fade route. Looks like they've got one-on-one -on -one at the top Play of the action screen. pass will be nice here, too. Third and seven for Fair. Good protection for Fair. Now he's going to roll to the right, fake the pass, get forced out of bounds by Xavier Denson. He's going to be shy of a first down by about three or four yards. So that makes it fourth down. Let's see if they decide to go for it again. You almost think that they're going to have to with 12-14 left, and they don't look like the kind of team, gentlemen, that if they get too far behind, they have the kind of offense that can open it up and get back in the ball game. Uh, don't, don't they have a kicker, an automatic kicker, who's supposed to be 46 yards and a cloud of smoke? Is that Tennessee? Well, Eric Newman, the field goal kicker for Alcorn State, has hit three of seven. His longest is 37 yards. Raston inside, and he looks like he's going to be short by about a yard. And they'll turn the ball over on downs. And they do turn the ball over on downs. 
12.08 left in this football game. Tigers in the lead with possession. What's wrong with this picture? Starting to get those young guys some reps as they start to look towards the future for Jackson State. We're going to see this guy a whole lot. Nathan, in fact, in our second BET telecast this year, ran for 179 yards against Tennessee State, number 30. And then sort of didn't run the football too much after that. And you wonder how guys fall out of favor with the coach or why they don't get the same kind of reps they were before. But he looks like he's going to be a promising talent here for years to come. Here's Kent on second down. Oh, good move. To his wide receiver who's still on his feet. And Danny is finally forced out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Hey, you got to like the fact that Daniel got said, this is my last game. This is my last Capital City Classic. I'm going to give you guys a little something to remember me by. Three-step pass, quick pass, quick hit. This is all Daniel got. Spin move to the outside, loses the defender Forbes there, and says, hey, I'm going to make all this stuff here happen for me. And goes 32 yards on that reception. Pardon me. I was Tyrone Parsons was the defensive back that he put the move on here. So we've got a timeout on the field, and the Tigers are looking for more as they are moving along against the Braves. 11-23 left in the football game, and a 13-point lead for JSU, who's driving on ASU. Robert Kent has been pretty solid at quarterback, and yet he has shown signs of being a great one. Last five games is thrown for 300 plus yards and he's gonna throw again downfield. Looking for Guy. And this time, Guy can't make the catch because a good defensive play by Tim Bates. Tim Bates, I don't know if it was a great defensive play, but he just kept running because he was beat. Yeah. And Kent's been a pretty effective passer today. What he's done is spread the ball around. Here he's taking a deep shot. They try to get the cornerback with a double move there. Ball's just slightly underthrown there and gave the DB a chance to recover. Kent stats on the day, 16 to 35, 233 yards. Efficient passing. The plays he has connected on have been big plays, like we said, what happened going into the game. This is a game with the conditions. You can throw your completion percentage out the window. Second and 10. Catch made, and a real nice one by Travis. Boy, the tight end has done a good job. Kendrick Travis came into the ball game with just three receptions to his credit, and he's already made three receptions in this ball game. One for a touchdown. Right here, he drops back, and he looks for him all the way. Throws it to him. Howard Clark, he stumbles. He could have made a, a tackle there, and been instead, tight end turns up and gains another five yards. Sets up a first and ten. JSU still driving. This time giving it inside to McLaurin, who's going to be stopped short of the initial line of scrimmage. In fact, he's going to lose three yards. I just said that Travis had three receptions. Check that. He has four receptions in this ball game. He's played a good football game. And when you think about what Coach Hughes is trying to do, he's telling everybody, hey, the next three years, my team is going to compete for the SWAC championship every year. I fully expect it. And he told me he's going to let the rest of the conference know that in the annual coaches meeting. So he's really, really high on this team he has here, and for good reason to be as well. Well, they had a chance to win the championship last year, but Southern knocked them off by one here on BET in the SWAC championship game. Although they were the champs of the East. Here's Kent. Looking for Guy. And Guy can't make the catch. And boy, they start. Do, do they start writing notes on you at, at, at that level, at that next level when you miss passes like oh, that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. They, they, they see everything that you do. They come in and they watch films during the week on you. When you least expect, you can be at practice and the scout can be in there. He goes in, oh, a little nice, nice fake move. posted and corner back out. Oh, everything man. but the catch. Big Nate thinks I'm critical. You got to see what the NFL scout is talking yeah. about critical. Because everybody's job is on the line on the next level. The scout, the water boy, the trainer. <laughs> I mean, but they got to see how he rebounds. And I think he'll rebound, make a big catch oh, yeah. here. That's just one play. Yep. Third and 13 for Kent. Good blocking. And his receiver knocked down, T.C. Taylor, and a late flag. 
It was late, but it was correct. Thank you. Because T.C. Taylor is the man. He wants to go get the football. You know, and also talking to Coach Hughes, there's a little thing going along in the SWAC now. You know, they got a lot of Southern pride. They're having a hard time getting that SWAC championship out the state of Louisiana. <laughs> Southern's been rolling for a little while, and Grambling is kind of holding on this year. Right. As we look at the replay here, T.C. Taylor just cuts back in, and the defender just kind of grabs him by the shoulder and wrestles him down. You know, they got to work hard to get that SWAC title out of Louisiana, out the bayou. And speaking of SWAC championship, I think we will be covering that, George, in the near future. December 2nd, Birmingham, Alabama. We will be making it happen. Here's our top ten. Yeah, we're gonna we'll come up with it in a second. I know you're ready to go. I know Jay's just itching. Yeah, this is he's just itching. <laughs> he's just itching to get this thing going. As we go to first and ten again. After the penalty, pass, can't fade. again. Oh, and Story looking for his second one-handed grab of the day. Getting carried Could away. not make it. Let's take a look at this top ten. And this is and this uh, the is official Jay Jay Walker, Walker uh, Newton and Big E's you know, top is, ten. We took I mean, it from you, George. I mean, come As on. we go down the list here, Grandma State, I told you two months ago, I thought Grandma State was the best team in black college right. football. They've proved me wrong. Doug Williams is doing an excellent job there. Bethune-Cookman. Two and three, that number two and three spot can flip-flop in the matter of a weekend. Florida a &M, Tuskegee, North Carolina A&T will come back and finish it up after this play here. I think they see the rest of them right there. <laughs> here we go. Over the mill. Oh, and Guy can't make the catch. Second time he's dropped the football in succession on consecutive plays. It's he wet. again was clear. It's wet out there. That, that's what happens when you're playing out there on so the let's, So let's don't draft him anywhere where they're playing it, when it <laughs> rains then, right? <laughs> we only want you, you, George, you, that is a mean thing to I say. I don't mean bro. to say that. I'm just saying. Yeah. You, Here's the play right here. Just nice saying. pass by the quarterback. Guy can't hold on. He has to pull off them gloves. Sometimes them gloves will get heavy <laughs> on you. But I will say this right here. His job is to catch the ball. And that's the bottom line. I'm following you, Big Nate. <laughs> <laughs> you have no other Just choice. Just like Emmett. Right. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> Third down. Here's Kent. And he's still looking for his receiver. And this time, Taylor can't make the catch. I like what Kent is doing here. Even though his receivers aren't getting wide open, he's going to the proper matchup. He's throwing the one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's not throwing in the double teams like Big Nate wants him to do. He's finding the one-on-one -on -one coverage <laughs> and sticking to it. It's, 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 <laughs> Here's a look at this right here. Look crossing route. Huh. That's a little underthrown there. And maybe the proper matchup is a little underthrown. And right there, you, when you're dealing with a young quarterback, though, you have to, receivers have to come up with the plays. They have to make the plays because you get into his head. He don't know where to throw the ball to. So now Reynolds will come in and attempt a 32-yard field goal and hits that line drive that looked like it went through the goal post, but we had whistles before the snap. Brian Reynolds, the senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Last week hit a 27-yard field goal. And let's see if they're going to move him back or give him an even better shot at yet another field goal. Reynolds has been SWAC player of the week twice this year for special teams. Alcorn being called for an illegal substitution. So they're going to move Mr. Reynolds a little bit closer to his goal post. Another penalty for Alcorn State. So Reynolds now with a chance at a 27-yarder. 18 penalties, fellas, for Alcorn State. Wow for 195 yards. Reynolds with the attempt from 27 yards out. And boy, is he feeling it or what late in the season? Brian Reynolds with yet another three points and extends the Tigers' lead to 27, actually 30 to 14. And we're back here, as you can see, kind of a wet field out there. As you can see, in the band is Nice and warm and toasted and underneath those schmucks. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. They got strong on it, see? That's what we call representing. That's what we call, you know? 
just having a little fun yeah, out there. Knowledge, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Focusing and, in on that sound. And it doesn't, boom. it doesn't look like the whole band is here. I mean, like half of them said, I'll tell you what, we'll, I'm sick today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. And yet, still powerful, still strong, and still representing. Prior to coming to this game, I heard a whole lot about the sonic boom of the South. And uh, we'll give credit to my buddies Fernando Smith and Marlo Perry, former Jackson State alum. They are every bit as good as you guys used to say. As they crank it up another notch for me now as I'm trying to talk. But um, they put on a great show at halftime, and they're supporting their team. And Jackson State, I mean, they've done a good job controlling this football game here. Got away from them for a little bit around the second quarter. They right. let Alcorn State make a run. They got momentum back in their favor, and they've done a pretty good job of clinching this football game. At this point, 9.39 left, and they're up by 16 points. You know, that's a foot taller than George is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't listen to that now, okay? <laughs> don't listen to Nate. It's a little taller than that. Oh, they showing out now. Look at him. All right. They got a little flavor up in the band, doing things. And so we await the kickoff from Brian Reynolds. After <laughs> the Tigers, I'm still not going to get past that tall thing, that short thing, whatever. <laughs> Y'all having too much fun up here. 16 point lead for JSU. And now here comes Alcorn State. Man, I like the way and he was. Nice little home pick. right here by Yancey Wright. Oh, and Wright's still on his feet, going to get out to about the 43 yard line, but I saw a flag come flying in. Yeah. And you just, you cannot continuously have these penalties on return. And now when you have a return guy, this is dangerous. It's really, I mean, yes. every kid, every time he touches the ball, he can take it to the house. If you just sustain your blocks, maybe that's why he's getting so open. Maybe that's why he's able to run it back so far. But this flag was way away from the, from the play itself. I mean, when you're that far away from the play, you don't, you don't hold a guy. You don't hold a guy. Holding for team. Face mask. Coming with offset. We're re -kick. Oh, they're going to re, -kick. re -kick. We'll get a little bit more excitement. <laughs> right. I don't know if you want Let's that to happen. Reynolds out here yeah. again, huh? <laughs> I like how that ref chopped it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did a nice job of chopping that up. He, yeah. He was a little confused himself. Because actually, before we say we can clinch it, as long as Jackson State has to keep kicking the football to Reynolds, you know, he can run it back in a heartbeat. We right. can have a football game in a matter of eight seconds. So, uh, on the other hand, let's talk a little bit about Alcorn State and the things they're going to have to think about regrouping when they when this season comes to an end. I mean, as you see this club right now, what do you think, gentlemen? Do they have the makings of two years down the road becoming a force again with the young talent that they have on this club, especially in the trenches? The problem I see is that they got to become consistent. They'll make a big play, they'll celebrate it, but then it takes too much and they got to be able to expect to make the play, stay consistent, play at a high level. Like I said, everything is built off of that offensive line that is young. So if you got a young offensive line maturing, they just got to stay at a high level. They got to practice at a high level, and this offseason is going to be key. This offseason will be key into becoming becoming a great line. Oh, I mean, I think it's easy, too. I mean, if you want to win at Alcorn State, just go find another Steve McNair. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> 16,000 yards passing, that's not an easy thing. Here's Reynolds. He's going to take it at the 15-yard line, and he's got a wall out there. Let's see if he can find the hole. And he gets it. Their special teams do a good job of getting them some type of wall. Let's go down to the field, Joe Claire. Hey, Joe Seezy. All right, it's all good down here. Now, I was talking a little smack about Jackson State. They said that they wasn't worried about uh, all corn state and um uh, and y'all swear you know the game the, the the band came back the band left got warmed up and came back that's how a real football team and band supposed to go they supported to the end i was talking smack i take it back back up to y'all in the booth man hey joe you look cold are you really that cold i'm freezing jay and it's not funny it's not funny it's not even cute Whew, it's warm up here, too. We got these gloves. Oh, it is? Let me give you these isotones we got on. <laughs> I don't know these isotones, but they don't work. First and ten, and the ball is in and out of the hands. That was tight. Actually, that, you're right. That was Marcus Holbert. Marcus, Marcus Holbert. 
I mean, this kid is a, is a, is a super player, man. I'm telling you, he's being looked at truly by the pros. I mean, like I say, Streets and Smith, All-American. He's been all-conference. Uh, they haven't been using him a lot in the offense. Uh, reasons unknown. Uh, well, he's averaging 12 yards per carry, but Coach Thomas will tell you that because of the inexperience at that offensive line, you can't really look at the stats of the rest of the guys. They haven't been able to do the things they wanted to do yeah. because that line's not providing the time. But uh, when you have a player of that caliber, you have to find ways to get him the ball. Okay. Second down and 10. Fair holding on to it. Fair gets the first down. Good looking run. Hit it back on that last play. You're exactly right, George. I mean, if the offensive line is struggling, your quarterback's completion percentage is going to go down. Your wide receivers aren't going to get the ball like they can. And conversely, they're not going to be used to catching the football so much because half the time it's not getting there accurately. So, Big Nate, you know that. So, what you need to do, Big Nate, is take it upon yourself, since you are Mr. All Everything, former NFL player and a black college alum, coach those boys up. These you guys up here having a good time with us. You should be it, teaching. You can, but you cannot. Uh, say these guys are not going to make it. I mean, these guys are young. We'll be, okay, Alcorn, go home. Y'all got a good offensive line. Don't play today. You can't do it like that. They have to play. First 10-10. The pass is almost picked off as Bryant was there. And Kenny, no, oh, interesting story about number 26, Kenny Bryant. This is a guy with seven blocks this year, as you'll take a look at it again. But on the defensive play is Bryant. He has seven block kicks this year, fellas. Right. Here's Yancey coming out of the backfield. Got tips at the last moment. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Back on the offensive line. Yes, a lot of things uh, comes off of the offensive line play. But you still have to put these guys in the play. They are the future. And if Coach Thomas can hold on to his job until next year, you will see that he's correct. You just saw Brian right there. I said seven block kicks. He had three block kicks this year against Texas Southern. Three in one, in one ball game. Wow. Also has a team high in pass deflections, two interceptions. Kenny Bryan is... He blocked, he blocked him against some good JSU teams there. single season record with seven blocks. Man, anytime you get in that Jackson State record book, you're doing it. Because they've had a long list of traditional players that have been fantastic, outstanding football players come through that program now. Last year, we saw three great players on the same team at Jackson State. And Sylvester Morris, Destry Wright, who broke Walter Payton's rushing record, and Mark Washington, who threw for 27 touchdowns last year at quarterback. Three great players who graduated for JSU. Here we go on third down and... This pass is incomplete. It looked like Mario Mouton was your defender back there to make the players. And Ronald pass. Gilmore was the receiver trying to make it. They say he's a hard worker, guy that stays out of practice and try to work with whatever quarterback they decide to use that week. See, and that's another thing I would like to speak on is you got to have continuity. Here he is right here, going deep. The quarterback releases the ball right, but the receiver has to run through to make the play. He's coming off hesitant, not knowing if he's going to get the ball or what, but he's got to come off the ball running. Torrey Finkpin is back for the punt. And Ch Chikoria with another nice punt inside the 10-yard line. That is a 40-yard punt, and that's three punts inside the 20 in the night. Warm. Got some hot and chocolate back. and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of the score of the game, the battle of the bands will go on at the end of the game. It wouldn't be a classic without it. And the, the Alcorn bands get a little upset, like, uh-oh, we better start blowing a little tougher. There's our championship game. It's either going to be Alabama A&M or Alabama State, who we happen to do just a couple of weeks ago in that Magic City Classic that Alabama A&M won. And because they won, they have the upper hand now going into that championship game. If they win today against Arkansas Pine Bluff, they're in. If they lose, it goes to Alabama State. And I think that would be a fantastic football game as Jackson State tries to run off a little bit of clock. 
Reason being, we said for a long time that we thought that Graham was one of the better teams in black college football. And as a conference as a whole, you want your best teams in that championship Thank game. You. And what happens here is you got Grambling that represents the whole conference taking on one of the Alabama teams. And I think Alabama A&M is currently winning their football game if they're playing by 13 points. If they hold on and you get that type of matchup, I mean, that's a good matchup because you got two thoroughly coached teams with Ron Cooper as well as Doug Williams down there Grambling. Two high-profile coaches trying to bring their programs back to a high level of playing. Absolutely. Second down and short. Ooh, that's the best shot we've seen all night long. Was he shot out of a cannon? Was that Marcus Or was it a 14? Or was it a 38 that hit that running back there? That been, well, Damian that Ducksworth make, got knocked back. Was that, a, was that Logan, Omega Logan? 49 looks like in there throwing leather. Well, you know, it's interesting. If that is Boom. Omega Logan, I asked him, I said, why did your parents name you Omega? He said, because I was the end, and that was it. <laughs> oh, okay. They told me I was last. Yeah, that so that's was what it. He, that's what he <laughs> so when he got that back. shot, he said, that's it. That's, that's the last. The that's over. The beginning and the end. <laughs> <In> the end. <laughs> and stopping runs like that, that right. is definitely the end of that run. And while we're speaking about Graham, one of the things we talked about earlier, what a job Doug Williams has done with that program yes, down man. there. Probably going to be the uh, Black College Coach of the Year in terms of what he's accomplished. One loss to Louisville, which you never fault him for. Right. Well, I don't know if he's going to be the Black College Coach of the Year, but he will be in the running for the Coach of the Year. <laughs> he should be. He actually has a real good Definitely. team. He's done some nice things. Got some good wide receivers right. down there. Good Scotty one. Anderson. Been he patient helped. with his quarterback and Hyman. They're going to be tough. We'll be back after this. Dallas, Texas. You know something about Dallas, don't you? I know a little something about that. What about Dow Worth? You ever heard of Dow Worth? <laughs> Once upon a time, maybe a buddy of mine was lying to me. <laughs> Dow Worth is a radio store, man. <laughs> In Dallas. Third down situation now for Jackson State. And they're going to get the first down thanks to Nathan McLaurin's run. And he picks up about eight yards on that carry, taking it out to the 25-yard line where it'll be first and ten. The clock rolling as we approach six minutes left in the game. Sorry, go ahead, Nate. He felt he should he had a home run there. He felt he should have took it. He come off the off, left side of his offensive line with a good lead blocked by his fullback. He came out of there. If he'd have shifted that ball to the other hand and got himself straightened up, it could have been catered by the door. I like this Jackson State team in terms of for next year. They're going to be something to reckon with. Fumble. Kent picked it up and was on one knee when he touched the football, so it's downed right there. Another loss. And Probably thought that was another offside. <laughs> Down to one knee. <laughs> they famous for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you, it's been an exciting game. You, you come in and you think that a, a Jackson State will blow out an all-corn team, but... All corners played them tough here with 5, 17, 16, 15 to go. And, and, uh, it's just been a nice game. Yeah, think about it. You know, you said it before. Those boys from the dirty south, yes, sir. <laughs> they don't play that lay down. They're going to come up and fight you every week. So here's Kent now on second down. Nice <laughs> receiver who takes time to pause for this commercial break, gets up, and then makes the run. That was Marcus Rogers. That's his third catch. catch for the day. Was that a second catch for the day? I think it's his second. He had one catch coming in. They gave him one that he cheated on afterwards earlier. <laughs> I mean, look at this here. He gets I wonder up. if he talks real high now. After that catch. Look at this. He's trying to run. <laughs> like he was break dancing there or something. That Good balance. James Brown. Yeah, that's some athleticism there, though. So Robert Kent now is 18 of 41 for 259 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Receiving, Daniel Guy has six catches. Kendrick Travis has four. T.C. Taylor with two. Lawrence Story has two receptions. And Marcus Rogers now has two receptions. So... It looks as if Ken has done a good job of spreading the wealth around, and because of it, his club leads by 16. Hey, I know clean. Back, 446 left here in the fourth. George Johnson along with Jay Walker, Nate Newton, and Joe Claire. Well, Joe, you know, we haven't heard from Joe. Maybe Joe's out getting a little hot chocolate. Yeah, down. man, he froze over the bushes somewhere. <laughs> Joe's listening to that Dougie Fresh to Jackson, the sonic boom is playing. You always go back to the old school. Jay, anytime you hear anything old school, it moves you. Here we go, first and ten. And another big carry 
for another Jackson State rusher. This time, it's the fullback, Lawrence Nolan, on the carry. So Nick Nolan is warming up. He came off that right side. Good blocks by Chris Hammond and Mr. Elliott. And this is another very young right player. right off tackle. He jumps outside. He's running hard. He cuts up. Good block by Mr. Story there. Lee's standing in somebody's way, and you can't expect much from a wide receiver. You don't want to break those delicate hands. <laughs> and that's how you know this is a pretty good Jackson State football team. Anytime you know you have to run out the clock the last four minutes of running it off, and you can do it, that means you have a pretty effective football team. You can dictate the defense, dictate to the defense. Well, here's Nolan again with the carry. Flag comes flying in as he picks up about seven yards. But I think we'll one of the I think one happens. of the linemen grabbed one of the uh, Alcorn's defense linemen threw him to the ground. That's the first time I ever heard you say something bad about the lineman. Yeah, he took him and threw him. <laughs> I mean, it was total domination. <laughs> okay. To me, as an offensive lineman, I liked it. But you, you can't just take a guy and manhandle him. He took this guy and manhandled him and threw him to the ground. He, he, li he literally mugged him. So he said he's got to find a better way to cheat with his technique. You right, get, get at least caught. get your hands inside. Okay. So we just heard again, as Jay mentioned earlier, that Alabama A&M leading offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. So they look for a leading Pine Bluff, so they've got the inside track for that championship game, yet we probably won't hear about the final by the time our game is over. But holy cow, 18 penalties for 195 yards. Alcorn State's got a little ways. To, oh, they got a long way to go. Alcorn or Alcorn? Alcorn. Okay. Alcorn. You know, we got, I, that, was I know. <laughs> that was for Joe. That was for Joe. Oh, good time. Good defensive play this time. The Alcorn Braves defense was swarming. That was Sunrick Shannon. Great penetration here by the defense. Alcorn Braves defense. Sondrick Shannon came up, made great play. Everybody's coming up to make sure he's down. Great effort today by the Alcorn Braves. And the clock continues to roll as we approach three minutes left in the football game. And they need to stop right now. If you can make Jackson State punt the ball to Mr. Reynolds, he can make some things happen for you. This time, Kent will keep the football. Oh, and he gets out of it. Still on his feet. Did a smart thing by not going to the sidelines, but keeping the football in the middle so that the clock could continue to roll. It's productive gain. About eight yards on the run there. You ever seen a commercial with Southwest Airlines? You're free to move about the country. The Braves are going to be free here about three, less than three minutes. Well, if Jackson State holds on to this victory, or uh, holds on to the lead and goes on and win as you see the total yards. Their record will improve to seven and four on the season. Four and three in conference play. One of the things about seven and four Jackson State, and then they're not too pleased with it. They don't settle on their laurels. You know, nine and two, ten and one have kind of spoiled them, become the norm down there. And, you know, and they feel that and they know what they got to do to get better. We've got a little ruckus going on down there. Big offensive lineman. Diamond. That was Kevin Thomas, who we saw right. hobble off the field. Right. Getting, right getting, 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 getting into it with Kenny. Getting in with Kenny with Ken Washington. Boy, I tell you, Ken Washington, hey, he don't know the meaning of stop. Heck of a football player. And he, he came out here and laid it all out on the line. Quit is not in his creed. So the clock starts again. <laughs> Third down, and they're going in the shotgun formation. So they're going to throw the football. And another high floater that was behind the receiver, intended for T.C. Taylor. And so that makes it fourth down, and they'll probably punt the football. And to Jay's gratification, we'll get a chance to see Reynolds again. Jackson State started the party a little bit. The town belongs to them at this point. Somebody's over there freezing for Jackson State. <laughs> Bro, y'all winning. Cool. Get up. Get up. Wake up. <laughs> Is he asleep? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Jackson State guy? Is that a Alcorn State guy? That's Alcorn State. Yeah, he's kind of getting froze. I tell you, the cold started to get to your mind. <laughs> the clock is ticking. Things are looking bad. 
the Sunny Boomers, Southers, going going about their business. All corn band is standing over here watching, saying, "Boy, we're about food." Well, this time they do the smart thing and keep, keep it away from Reynolds. <laughs> it took them a whole game, but they figured it out. <laughs> so 1:44 left in the clock. We're gonna wrap this thing up right after this. Jackson, Mississippi. As we start to wind things down here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, now time for our Tebow play of the game. And it involves Daniel Guy, who we were talking about with the hands, and yet he shows some great hands there on the touchdown reception with two defenders around him. Daniel Guy with our TiVo play of the game. Today's play of the game has been brought to you by TiVo. TV your way. TiVo. TiVo! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the real deal right here. 144 of the real deal left. And we'll see if the Braves can do anything, but they're going to have to throw the football down. I mean, they just cannot now put it in the hands of Raston. No. I know you'd like to see that again, big boy, but I don't, think, I don't think they can afford that. But that defense for Jackson, uh, Jackson State is going to pin the ears back and just rush the pass from now. And Fair's pass is ruled incomplete, and that makes it second down intended for Gilmore. Are you surprised that we haven't seen the other quarterback, Damian Ford, who was considered a better passer in this yes, football game? But but due to the weather and the circumstances, hey, they, they picked the better quarterback today in fair, I think, been trying to lead this Alcorn Braves team. And, you know, it's been a great day for him. Uh, time is just running out. Fair, forced out of the pocket, makes a nice little move right there and gets up close to a, another first down. Fair out here to 26, you the first down. Depends on the spot of the ball. He was taken down by Cecil Forbes. Clock's still running, so they didn't give him a first down, I don't think. Makes it third down in the yard. Minute five and counting, and you can see in your screen. Well, they've got to use a... a timeout just lack of execution they're not used to being in this situation right here the two minute offense where you have to throw the football a whole lot they're a running team and getting people in the right position for the two minute offense just cost them a timeout there well at this time here i don't think a timeout will hurt them today's black college football classic has been brought to you by southwest airlines southwest Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. And by TiVo, TV your way. And by AutoZone. The more than 2,800 AutoZone stores in America, the best parts at auto parts. And by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. Right now, I can use me a coffee from McDonald's. <laughs> it would make me smile. Would you, would you mind the Big Mac with that? Oh, I like that quarter pounder with cheese, that double quarter pounder combo. A big extra on the side with cheese and a few nuggets to kick. <laughs> you go to, make, you go to McDonald's and order appetizer. I go to the McDonald's and order a home run. <laughs> You, man, I'm telling you, it's about time to enjoy yourself. It's been a great day. Uh, the weather has been kind of gloomy, but it is football weather. Well, 58 seconds left to go in the game. Safe to say that Jackson State has done a pretty good job. Mission accomplished. Sloppy, sloppy football game, sloppy field. Anything could have happened. They did a pretty good job of managing the game when things got out of hand. Especially in the first half. And the Braves show some potential by keeping this thing close. Well, for Alcorn, one of the things that Alcorn has to do is just, what do you do to get an offensive line ready outside of, obviously, game experience, Big Nate? What else can you do? I mean, are there certain drills you have to go out and think about a new just, offensive line coach? What do you do? You no, know, just keep working together because knowing what each other would do in certain situations and what blocking schemes uh, does the job for you. I mean, make sure they get together, work this, together this offseason. Uh, 
Now, now, what's, what's, what's working for the offensive line, let's see, because I was under the impression that those linemen just sat around and ate chitlins all day. No, nah, no, nah, you, you do f uh, footwork, you you uh, lift weights together, you go over blocking schemes, you watch films of what the guy before you uh, done at your position and what, what you can learn from. We don't just sit up and just eat uh, chitlins and collard greens. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> you know, I caught that inside joke there, but it's... <laughs> It doesn't work when I'm talking about a serious uh, <laughs> commitment to excellence is what Alcorn is trying to complete here as an offensive line, a young offensive line. You know what, Nate? That's Thank serious, you. That serious tone of voice just doesn't work well on you. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> well, meanwhile, we're playing football on the field, folks, and it's first and ten with 45 seconds in county. But I guess you guys can go back because this one's just about over, fellas. Fair's got very few plays to try to get the football in the end zone, and this time his receiver drops the football in Gilmore. 34 seconds left. There's no quit. So we've got, that, Fair. we've got that SWAT championship game coming up in a couple of weeks, December 2nd. You guys like Grambling State. Jay's made no bones about that. Do you think Alabama A&M or Alabama State can give them a go? And if so, which team would this, give them the best go? Is this on or off the record? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on air now, so I'm going to let you go ahead. <laughs> Ron Cooper is the Alabama A&M team. We'll run the ball, and we'll give you the best chance to win. They will, but one of the things they won't be able to do, like they did against Alabama State when they played them, when we saw them on BT, is kind of out-coach right. the Grand State team. He can bring all those blitzes if he wants to. Ben's going to have something to combat that. Yes, their best will. game of the year, they played against Alabama State, and they just blitzed him to death. I don't think you can blitz a Doug Williams coach football team all day long. Not with a young Scotty Anderson breaking Woo! off a and route. Getting and Levi Washington. And, it. and Levi Washington made some plays, too. As this game comes to an end. Yes, it does. So we've run out of time. Alcorn State has run out of time. As Jackson State closes out the season with a 30, the 14 win over the Braves. Once again, we want to remind you that coming up on December 2nd, it'll be the SWAC championship game. Grambling State taking on Alabama A&M or Alabama State. A&M wins today, they're in. If they lose and Alabama State wins, they're in. Once again, for Joe Clare, Nate Newton, Jay Walker, I'm George Johnson. Thanks, Eric Moore. We'll see you when we see you. Peace.